Hello friends, welcome to the course. In this lecture, we will be talking about what is Jira, why we need Jira and why it is getting so popular. On the other hand, why it is so popular. So let's start. What Jira do? What Jira tool is exactly all about? If we say in a layman language, we can say that Jira is a tool which handles project management or bug tracking. What actually is project management and bug tracking and why we need a tool for them? Actually in today's scenario, suppose in a project there is a team of 15 persons. So it may be a case that half of the team would be sitting in India and half of the team is sitting in US. Also out of those 15 team members, some are QA assurance professionals, some are developers, some are team lead. There comes a situation that during testing a lot of bugs are created. When a bug is created, it goes to the developer, it is fixed, then moves back to QA, then it is closed. So there's various cycles. There are project requirements. There are continuous change requests. So within a project, there is so lot of work lot of requirements, lot of issues. Handle in such a big distributed team such issues through mail is not possible. If we communicate in a mail, a lot of information won't be shared or will be unread. We maintain a tool which is known as project management tool which handles all this stuff. So if we say primary Jira is a bug tracking or project management tool. Now let's see what exactly the Jira does. Bug tracking. Jira is popularly known for bug tracking. Bug tracking means that whenever QA is testing any build and he finds some issues, he locks a defect in Jira and assign it to developer. When developer fixes, it assign back to QA person to re-verify it. During the testing of a product, the tool which is used to handle or manage all the defects is known as bug tracking. We cannot handle through mails because in a product there can be thousand of bugs. So handling these thousand of bugs in a distributed and a large team is not possible. So that why we need a bug tracking tool and Jira is a best and a popular tracking tool. Issue tracking. So it is not case that only bugs are entered in the system during the project management. There can be issues. Issues like there can be change requests, there can be requirements, there can be uh, let's say a new added feature. The task which are assigned to a developer is also an issue what actually developer needs to do. We need to track all those stuff. So issue can be anything. As a team lead, I want to know that during the start of a project, what all task is allocated to my team. The one way is that I open a notepad and write my developer's name and in front of them assign, okay, these four, four, four tasks they need to do. But those tasks would change during the project. Those tasks would get update. So handling those all stuff in notepad and mails is not possible. So all is done through a portal issue tracking system and that is Jira. During a project management there can be various cases of requirement, releases, starting of a sprint. So all those project management activities are done through Jira. Point regarding the project management is Managers need reports. Management are not interested in how a single bug is going in a system, how many bugs are closing per day. No. They need reports that in a month, how many number of issues or bugs were raised and how were closed. So Jira is a best tool to track these. It generates really fancy reports which helps the managers and the upper management to track their project activities. Requirement management. Jira does it very well. Also Jira, it is developed by a company known as Atalassian. They have developed a product Jira. So similarly, 
the Atlassian company has developed some 10 to 15 more tools and have integrated them so that they can help each other. So requirement management. Atlassian has one of a popular software known as Confluence which does the requirement management. We have added in Jira because more of all we talk about Jira as a whole ecosystem. That Jira has this capacity because we can integrate the Jira APIs and Confluence with each other. If you buy the Confluence also it will automatically be integrated to your Jira account. So requirement management is done very well through Jira. Help devs. We all know about help devs and all the BPOs and KPOs who are being calling us in day to day life. When we have an issue we call the customer care. So there is a portal which is managing all that stuff. It's a help desk portal which the Jira provides. In simple words we can say Jira let you prioritize, assign, track and audit your issues. But during all your project work it handles your project work whether it's requirement your project management your issue tracking if you have a project Jira is a must you need to have for now I can say that if you are in software industry especially if you are in software insurance field then Jira is a must tool which you should learn every companies every major companies are now using the Jira once you go through Jira you follow a process when you're not using a Jira just an instant let's fix this issue developer says okay I will fix it and just test it but if you go through the Jira if you log that bug into a Jira it will be sure that it is fixed it goes into the build and you know in which build is was fixed so Jira tracks all those activities it makes the process in your project smooth when we are talking about Jira yes it does bug tracking issue tracking project management required management help desk so for help desk and project requirement management there are other uh, plugins we need to use uh, Jira it can handle your day-to-day -day activities I know many persons who are using Jira in their daily activities like you maintain a to-do list so they maintain it on the Jira so that they can track their activities they can estimate their activities it depends upon you how much you want to use in your life Jira e will ease your language it will ease your task which you are doing whether it's your project or anything now as the, we have Jira there are other project management tools other bug tracking tools there are other tools available so why Jira customized issues as we have talked that in Jira you can create bugs you can create issues now Jira has not come up with the definite approach, a predefined approach that you need to these step, these step and this. You have to only do like this. No. Jira is totally customizable. How the process goes in your project, how it should go, any change in this process, fields or anything is totally customizable. So when I said before that you can use Jira in your personal life as well as Jira in your project you can use so definitely Jira provides so much customization so you can adapt it as per your needs so every issue is customized reports there are other tools available but Jira develops a really fancy reports as a QA professional when you're doing testing or day-to-day -day testing we send our test reports so it's a big effort of a tester to find how many bugs he received, how many test cases executed, how many defects were logged, how many defects were closed today, how many defects were reopened today. So there is a huge lot of data and management can anytime ask for any of these data. So to keep track of these records is not possible. But with the help of Jira, you cannot only get the data. You can just within few seconds click generate a report, pie charts, any type of chart, very different charts, really fancy charts having all the detail. Within seconds you can generate, attach it to your mail and you can just shoot your mail to the manager. 
and that is possible in within this seconds that is one of the main reason jira is so popular notifications it has a very powerful notification you get instantaneous mails if someone is performing any activity on any issue created by you if you are getting confused what is this term issue i have been talking about it will be cleared in the later on lectures when we'll be talking about what issue really is just now just think issue maybe can be a defect okay so you can subscribe to any defect that whenever any activity or process is changed in the defect i should receive a notification powerful search as we have discussed you can generate reports for the reports you can need data you can have very powerful search you have very powerful filters available secure secure it's in its own terms these days very big companies popular companies majority of the software is using jira track you can easily track all the process extensible by extensible i mean that jira has hundreds of plugins jira is actually a open source a licensed open source you will find a number of plugins available some are free and some one you need to pay for it we will be covering in a later lectures that what are these plugins and all those stuff open source jira is open source you can download the code and start coding on it but it is a licensed software that is all about jira what is jira jira is a tool which help in your day to day activities to maintain to manage your project work in this lecture we will be studying how we can install jira on your system on google type jira open this link that is atlassian.com atlassian is a company which has its one of its product as jira if you go to the atlassian products you can see they have many products like jira software confluence confluence is for documentation big bucket is for code management git repository source tree they have hip chat as a team chat video chatting and sharing software so similarly they have many uh, products some of them are popular like jira and confluence are the most popular products of them now let's go back yeah so the this was jira what they say they say why just jira is so useful they said that this tool makes plan and track the activities it handle all the releases and it generate a very good reports it also says that you can choose a workflow of your own workflow means that how the process should go in a jira depends upon you how you want to make it they have many add-ons enhanced jira with add-ons as uh, jira is a open source licensed open source so there are many add-ons available explore add-ons if let's say if we go to the marketplace so many of them are free also and many are paid but they do provide a trial period so you can just first try before buying total 1381 Uh, add-ons are present only for jira software so many jira plugins this is a zephyr it is one of a popular add-on it is used for if you want to write test cases also in jira because jira does not support test case writing tool it is a not a test case writing tool but with the integration of the zephyr in jira you can write test case also So similarly, there are other add-ons also available. Now you can use Jira software in mobile also. Yeah, it is used by many big companies, as you can see here. And also, it comes with a seven days free plan. Now see its pricing. So Jira comes with two options. One is cloud, and another is self-hosted. Cloud means that all the Jira software will be hosted on the cloud itself. you have just to create your account and start working while self hosted means that all the software would be installed on your local server let's check the pricing for the cloud yes for the cloud if we go for 10 users then it would be 10 dollar 
per month while for big teams it is like 75 dollar for 15 users so uh, we can see that if your team is small then they are ch charging very less amount 10 dollar per month is very less so as the number of users increases their prices also increase for 50 you can see it is for 300 dollars only you see the comparison for 10 it's 10 dollar and for 50 is just stretched to 300 so this is for the crowd pricing if you want to go for cheap pricing then you can go for self hosted you can see for 10 users it is 10 dollar and it is one time payment not yearly payment and if you want to go for let me open for 500 users so that we can easily compare for 500 users it is $18,000 one time payment and for 15 users if you want to pay yearly then it is 12,000 per year so if you set a server and did a one time payment then it's fine it is very good you are paying just an $18,000 and you are using lifelong I will suggest you use a cloud they give a 7 days trial period subscribe to it practice it if you want to practice more it's just ten dollars you can just buy it for more a month and can practice it's not a very costly tool yes it is costly when the number of users are increasing or we can start just click on try for free we are interested in only jira software this documentation means confluence so we are not interested in other uh, uh, atlassian products we are only interested in jira software so you can say try it for free so you can enter your details name email password and what is this claim your site what is this Jira creates your account it creates your website it makes a URL of your Jira account so my case I have entered helping testers dot atlassian dot net so when you will click on start you will receive a some mail like this that welcome to atlassian cloud that uh, in my case your new site is helping testers at atlassian.net you can just click on it and verify your email so let me i have already verified it once you click there will be uh, four to five minutes of processing going and then your account would be created let's open to my jira account it's asking me to log in use your password and log in into the software that is your jira software as you can see the url is helping testers.atlassian.net this will be your dashboard looks like when you visit the jira first time this is how you can install jira one more thing that for the learning purposes jira provides two projects two build type projects already sample projects so you can just import that and start learning so how you can import you can go to create project so i want to create a sample data i clicked on scrum software development so it would be scrum sample project and let me create an another project also that would be this Kanban sample project. Kanban project. Let me see view all projects. So now and let me change its name also. Kanban. Sample project. So now we have two projects that is Scrum uh, Sample Project and Kanban Sample Project. So this is how uh, we can install Jira and also we have imported two of the sample projects. As you can see now the dashboard is appearing to be changed. So uh, that was all in this session. In next section, we will start with Jira that what are these options and how to start working with it. Hello friends. So before learning of Agile or Jira, so it is recommended to understand what is a waterfall model. 
it is a model which is used by the IT industry to build the softwares. Now there are many types of models and processes which are being followed by the companies but waterfall model is the oldest and the safest and easy model which is used. So let's start with studying of this model. So this model is broken down into number of phases. So let's study these phases one by one. Considering if uh, there is a client and he wants to develop a software, let's say any software. So what he does, he reaches out to a company, let's say a service based company XYZ who develops software. Okay, so he went to the company and then he said that I want to build that software. Now what that company would does, it will collect all the requirements, the knowledge customer has or the client want to have on his software. So they will collect all that information and prepare documentations. So that is the first phase of waterfall model. Once this activity is done, then we start with the design phase. So what in the design phase we do is we prepare the designs. We prepare the high level and low level designs, flow diagrams. So a upper layer before we start actually developing of the software. So whatever the designs are required, let's say customer wants a e-commerce website similar to Amazon. So what we'll be doing in the design phase, we will be developing the UI of it by the designer. We will be preparing flows that how the data will flow. So all this stuff will be working on this design phase. So once this design phase is done, we will say, okay, we have the requirements. We have the designs now start coding and building that software. So it's the longest phase of a waterfall model where the development team will start actually coding and building that software. Now, once that software is developed, it is handed over to the testing team. So testing team will test that software. If there are any bug is found, they will let the developer know and make sure that issue is fixed. So they will end to end complete that software. Now once that software is developed, it is handed over to deployment team for the deployment. For example, you develop the Amazon website it is developed, it is tested, now it is be, it is to be deployed on the servers so that it's become live so the, the real users can start using it. So that is the deployment. The next phase is the maintenance. So what is a maintenance? For example, a client who wants a software to be developed was quoted that one year this software would be developed. Now all the phases are completed and the software is done and, and now it is deployed and handed over to client. But usually the clients want they want a maintenance period. Like for example, let's say a maintenance period of two years. In that period, if any bug is reported in the software, they want some slightly enhanced features handling all the servers. They need a team to handle all those stuff. So they generally go for the maintenance period of one or two, three years. So that if any issues come in that software after the product going live, it can be maintained. So these are the phases of the waterfall model. So that's why the name also comes waterfall. So as you can see as if you pour water on the requirement phase, it will come in a type of waterfall. So that's why it is known as waterfall model. It's the easiest model for building a software which easily represent the real life. In real life also, if you are given a task, your first question is, please explain me my requirements, what the real task is. Then you will see that designs, that is you will check whether you have the resources to be able to prepare that or work that task which is given to you. Then development, you will start working on that task. Then you will test the task which was given it has been completed or not. Then you deploy it. For example, the task which was given by the person, you will tell him that your task is completed. And if any issues are fine in your task, you will be there to resolve your queries. 
so waterfall model represents and the easiest way how the software can build so it's the most popular model which have been used in the industry from very past and there are some advantages of what for model so the first one says this model is very simple so as we have just said is easily represent any task which you need to do in a real life like you need to catch the requirements and all those stuff so it's very simple these are separate phases each phase start only when one phase is over so it's a very easy model the second says this phase have specific deliveries so that's why we know that after the requirement is done we have all that stuff that what the customer needs so after each phase it's we have its deliverables once the software is developed we have its deliverables that the software is developed so this is how this waterfall model becomes so easy the next phase is in this phase the phases are not overlapped in this model the phases are not overlapped so what we mean by this that each phase start once the previous phase has been over the design phase or let's say a testing phase will start only when the development phase is over the design phase is start only when the requirements are over so there are predefined set of rules complete one phase then move to second phase don't overlap don't make a hodgepodge what is going in your project no complete a phase and then move to the next project or let's say next task now let's study like this was a practical example of waterfall model which is used in the industry but let's see how it goes and how the real outcome is so for example as we studied before this was a client who needs let's say a software for whatsapp so he reaches to a company uh, and he takes two months so there were meetings between the company and the client they have discussions for let's say two months and the company documented it all the requirements of the client was so whatsapp is not an easy language there is a lot of coding and a lot of work behind that application though it looks very simple that it is used for chatting and calling but there is a huge time invested behind that so in the two months process all the requirements were gathered now they have prepared the set of documents now the real development start the development team is start coding and developing the software so let's assume it took around 10 months of process so now you can see around 12 months have been used two months in requirement and 10 months but still the client does not have any idea so the client interacted with the software team for two months and given them the requirements he reaches out the software team to get the status the answer we will get is no we are still in development or let's say the software team has quoted that they will get the software built in let's say 13 to 14 months so they will say please wait for the duration of time because it is still in development so now when the development phase is complete the testing is done so let's say it would be a two months of testing so in that if the bugs are found it will again go to the development team to be fixed it will take around 2 months for the software to have a quality testing once the testing is done it will go for the integration and the launch so that the whatsapp becomes live but when it becomes live and reaches the customer and the client you can find the face of the client is it has taken more than a year around 13 months and the software which the client has received is not what he expected if a client needs a whatsapp to be built so definitely his requirement was that he want to grab the whatsapp market it should be a popular software as compared to whatsapp but the end product he received was not matching that product because the client was having only the requirements in verbal phase or in documentations with the software team he was not having any communications or he does not have any prototype to view like how it was working in the initial phases so you can take a simple example the client did not like even the designs 
okay the designs of the uh, software or the whatsapp application which was built so he is now frustrated also it took around 13 months to build a software in that period there were n number of features available in a software applications there were updates but those updates were not incorporated in the in this copied whatsapp application so now let's say after 13 months let's say a x number of software was developed for which the client was unhappy so his face was this but he says okay we have a product now but now let's put the issues or new features into it or the issues or the designs which i don't like let correct them or the colors or whatever the scenario is but the problem is let's say the client gives let's say x amount of work x amount of changes so that would be taking a lot of time it would be taking three to four to six months of time again because the process this process has to go again again the client and requirements and the software team will sit to catch the requirements again the whole development will go again the whole testing will go again the whole launch so this process is reoccurring process and it takes a lot of time because the whole software is developed now and if you make a slightest change you need to develop or modify the whole software it's a simple case for example you are building you are constructing a building if you did not reviewed what type of material which was used by the construction company in the starting and now when the building is constructed and you go and check that the cement quality is poor replace that cement quality so you think that the construction company within a month can develop again that building with the new cement no they have to take a lot of time to make the changes so similarly the case with the software since this software is only visible to the client by the end which takes a lot of time so it is not prone to changes that's the main drawback of this waterfall model that you cannot adapt to changes because the final software is viewable to the client after a long period of time so the changes or the updations investing a lot of money to have those happen let's summarize the drawbacks the time to market is high releasing of product only takes place once all the phases are complete so in our example it took around 13 months for a software to become live second what you expect and what you receive were totally different or not totally but they were not exactly the same because the customer was or the client was having just an idea which was documented idea but when he saw the real application he is not getting the feeling that his idea is good or not the third not suitable for projects where requirements are at moderate to high risk of changing it's the same case we studied for the construction company if your requirements are changing this model is not recommended because in this model all the requirements are initially done at the requirement phase so in a 13 month software development period all those requirements are captured in the first two months in the next 11 months there won't be taking any more requirements this model is used only when the requirements are well known clear and fixed if you have a proper set of requirements that I only want this maybe after two years also I want only this I have decided then go for the waterfall model that's all for the waterfall model so what will be do next will be studying what is an agile and how we can overcome the challenges of waterfall model hello friends so in this lecture we'll be studying about what is an agile as there is a first word agile everywhere so let's first understand that what is not an agile nowadays you check with any team you will get a clear word that yes we follow an agile but let's first understand that what is not an agile conducting meetings first point 
teams usually think that if they are conducting frequent meetings or meeting the starting of the day let's say 5 for 5 to 10 to 15 minutes so if we are following that meeting we are following an agile no only following meetings does not make you an agile writing stories on sticky notes so this is a craze nowadays on every desk or in the boardrooms you will find that columns prepared and sticky notes going on the chart boards from one column to another if you're following that only you're following that but you don't have any other process going so you're not following an agile requirements changing anytime so this is the very setback of the agile which the customers think is like being agile is that you can change anything anytime and you can get the product at the same time I have seen many companies where the clients are giving the changes, updates, and they want it at the same day. So no, it's not an agile. If you think that the requirements can be changed anytime, no, it's not an agile. Unstructured development. So if you're not following any plan, you are working on ad hoc basis. Ad hoc does not mean agile. And if you're not preparing your documentations, we have usually got comments many times where the people are saying that we are not making documentations because we are following agile agile does not say that this was the wrong of agile not study what actually the agile is so what is agile then if it's not the agile then what's the agile again agile is methodology no agile is not a methodology neither it's a developing software like we have seen in the waterfall model it was a process having the phases no it is not any software development method agile is a framework or process it's not a framework it's not a process they are not the rules they are not the methodologies so these are not agile agile does not says that you need to follow this process then you will be agile no agile does not say that then what's the agile agile is a set of beliefs to make a decision for developing software so agile says that if you want to develop a software follow these uh, beliefs or philosophy then make a developer software they are not rules they are the philosophy a set of values and principles in a rough example what a waterfall model is saying that if you want to go if you want to let's say from your home you want to go to a bank so what a waterfall model says that take a bus or take a train and go to the bank so that's a waterfall and other models while what the agile would say agile would say that do go in the daytime when it's not so sunny go in the daytime so it would be easy so it is talking so when you follow that philosophy so your work you're going to the bank would be more smoother okay so it's just a rough example not considered with the agile software development but it just make you give a brief glimpse what an agile so agile is a beliefs it's not a rules or uh, not a process it's a belief philosophy it's a set of values and principles for developing a software how you wanna believe and work on them depends upon you no two teams will be following the same agile process it will be varying from company to company teams to team so as per your teams you will be following that beliefs and working on agile so that's all the agile is history of agile says when it come was in 2001 so there was a group of 17 people we were discussing the processes and how to make the process simpler so then they make this agile so they have laid a manifesto of agile and a principles to be followed when you're working on agile so let's go with their manifesto what their manifesto of agile is and what the principle or agile is so what the agile manifesto says so now what I am quoting agile manifesto agile principles these are already laid by the agile team so you can find it them online also so these are not my words but they're coming from the persons who have laid the 17 persons who have laid this manifesto and principles 
so what this agile manifesto says it says that we are uncovering better ways of developing software so it's speaking itself they are uncovering better ways they are not saying that you should develop like this but they are uncovering uncovering means that you still need to try they are not sure you still need to try that there are better ways of developing a software and helping others to do it what are the values are in which the manifesto says value says is that these are the tasks which we do during the software so it says that we need to do all these eight tasks but we have to make sure that the left task is given more priority in terms of the right task so if we talk about the first value what it says that individual and interaction over process and tools let's say if you are stuck while working in a project so what you normally do you normally try to find an another process and another documentation which will help you to overcome or come out of this issue or where are you stuck or you will take the help of any tool so what it says that don't try to get in involved much on the process or the tool it's better to interact interact with the teams interact with the clients interact with your managers wherever you stuck try to get it resolved don't check for documentation and tools and what this is the next is working software over comprehensive documentations so what it says is that documentation is needed but the working software is much needed so whatever which is in right size agile does not says that you don't need them agile is not saying that you don't need a documentation Agile is saying yes, documentation is needed, but working software is much needed. If you have let's say twenty documents, but if your simple prototype of a software is not ready, will the client be happy to see the documentation? A simple answer is no. So documentation is also needed, but working software is the main priority. The third point: customer collaboration over contract negotiations. Yes, contract negotiations are really important. They make the budget of your project. But the customer collaborations. If you're stuck with the requirements, if you're stuck with the process, just don't go over what is in the contract and what we have negotiated. Try to interact with the customers. Get their point of view, their requirements, and work on them. Don't just stick and be rigid that this is what we negotiated. the next is responding to change over following a plan so as in waterfall model what we do we used to make a plan in, in the requirement phase that this is the requirement phase this is the design phase this is the development phase so we have a series of phases we have prepared a plan like in the two months as in our example like in the two months we will make the requirements in next months we will be making a design in so and so and then we decided like say in 13 months we'll be giving your software so there is a plan while the agile says it's good to follow a plan but you should be dynamic so that you can respond to changes so whenever a change comes in between when you are developing a software you should be able to make the changes you should be so versatile so this is the four values which the agile says whatever which is in right is needed but make sure that you are giving more weightage on the left items agile people have also laid 12 principles so let's study one by one so the first principle says our highest priority is to satisfy the customers so agile says the customer is everything whatever the customer needs if customer have any issues if customer want needs time needs meetings so always give priority to the customers okay try to listen what the customer is saying and give the quality software to the customer so now the second point the second point says welcome changing requirements even late in the development so as we have studied in the waterfall model like if there any changes are required a whole process needs to be done again so waterfall model was rigid they says that get all the requirements in the starting phase they are not versatile or prone to changes so that they can incorporate the changes in between the agile says 
work like so that the changes can be taken any time. The software industry is changing at a very rapid pace, so the updates and the changes in the software can come any time. So always be prepared for them. The third point, delivering working software frequently from a couple of weeks to a couple of months. As in waterfall model, the final product, when the final product is ready, then only it is shown to the client. While the agile says, don't wait for too long. Wait for some weeks or months and whatever which you have developed, give a demo to the client so he get a glimpse of the software which you are preparing at the initial phases at an incremental model so if he does not like anything he should raise the issue and the respective changes can be made in the software so it always to give demo to the clients frequently business people and developer must work together daily throughout the projects so what it mean by saying is like the customer clients and the team should interact they should interact daily for few minutes at least they should build project around motivated individuals give them the environment and support they need and trust them to get the job done what agile believes actually is it believes on the team it believes on the customer, it believes on the company, it believes on the people. For example, a task is given to a team member, then believe in him. Give him all the resources, let's say the docs, the system, the information study, the internet. So whatever the resources he need to work, give him all the resources. And then trust him that he would work. Don't micromanage him. Don't poke him after an hour or two hours. Let's say what you have done, what you have no. Agile says trust on your team members, trust on your team. The next point, the most efficient and effective method of conveying information to and within a development team is face to face conversation. So Agile says there can be situations like you need to interact with the customer, clients and the development team. So that is usually done through mails or through phone calls. So Agile says it's better to have face-to-face -face meetings. So face-to-face -face does not always speak to that you should visit to a company or a common place. But if you're doing a chat, make sure it's a video chat. Have always a face-to-face -face conversations. The seventh point says working software is the primary measure of a progress. So Agile says that that whatever the software is developed is neither through the documentation and or what your project manager is saying. How much software is actually developed and working. So that's the real progress of the project. Agile process promotes sustainable development. The sponsors, developers and the users should be able to maintain a constant pace indefinitely. So Agile says that you should work at a constant pace. It's not that, for example, in waterfall, what you can do, you know that I need to develop this in six months. So it can be the case, for example, two days your team is resting and not working to their efficiency. Two days they are working more. Agile says make your team constant in deliveries. Your team works eight hours a day. Make sure they are working eight hours a day. It not be the case someday they are working for two hours and the next day they are working for 12 hours. No, make them constant. Continuous attention to technical excellence. Technical excellence is the team should be technically good so that they make a good designs so that there if any the changes in between they can be easily incorporated. So team should be proper with technical skills. Simplicity, the art of maximizing the amount of work done is essential. So that's, that's pretty self-explanatory. 11th point says, the best architectures, requirements and designs emerge from self-organizing teams. So whatever the architecture teams, designs you are developing, make sure all the team is included in that. Discuss with the team and develop the architectures. Just don't blindly follow any architecture which is available. Communicate with the team. 
and collaborate to develop those architectures and designs. And the last 12th point, at regular intervals, the team reflects on how to become more efficient. So what it's saying is that team should meet frequently and then they should also discuss that what is going good in a project, what are the hurdles. So this should be a frequent meeting where a team members can spoke what the issues they are facing so that their issues are heard and can be properly resolved. So these were some points, for, uh, principles of Agile. So what we have studied here, what is an Agile? Agile is not a process or methodology. Agile is a set of beliefs and values. So they say a person that you should follow or try to believe on these principles so that your software development becomes very easy. So they have laid a manifesto with values, what they are, and also they have laid some principles. So now you can work with these principles and manifesto and you can prepare your model that how you be working it. So similarly, there are various type of models. Scrum model is available. Kanban model is available. Extreme programming is available. So there are many type of models which are developed. Hello friends. So we have studied what is an Agile, that Agile leads a set of beliefs or values which should be followed so that you can build a software development project. On this beliefs and values, there are a number of models developed which follows the Agile. So the one, the most popular one is the Scrum methodology. So in this session, we'll be talking about the Scrum. Well, how this Scrum or the Sprint works, let, we will just break down the Scrum into Sprints. In the waterfall model, what we have studied, like in the initial phase, the whole requirements are done, then the whole design is done, then the whole development is done, and the whole testing and deployment is done. It takes a full life cycle to be completed then only the final product is viewable to the client now what this scrum says that take a small part of a project of a software to be built plan it then build it test it and review it so it's a minimum set of shippable product for example, let's say you want to build an e-commerce website. Though there can be n number of modules in them. For example, the one can be integration of payment system. One can be logging and sign up. One can be the card functionality. So it can be broken down into number of features. So it says break the whole development into a number of sprints. Or you can say a number of parts. So in the first part, build a small projects which can be shipped to the customer or which can be shown to the customer. For example, let's on the first phase develop only the login and sign up screens and functionality. Once they are developed, ship product. For example, display to the client. Then again do this activity. That is again plan build and test review a next set of phase for example in that case you can develop the integration of payment system so instead of developing the whole of the software build small small parts of the software which can be shipped to the customer build a software in incremental model build a small part then on top of that build a small part of the software so that in each phase in each phase, which we call them in a sprint, the outcome of that sprint is shippable to the client. Similarly, when the second phase completes or the sprint completes, then worked on the next item and so on. This one activity, this one phase is known as a sprint. So, first the one sprint takes place and the product is shipped to the customer. Then, the second sprint starts and shipped to the customer and then on top the third sprint starts and shipped to the customer. So the software is developed on incremental model. 
unlike the waterfall model the whole of the product is only viewable to the client once the complete software is built but here in this scrum after the end of each sprint the product is viewable to the client though the com not the complete model but a part of the functionality so after period of time customer is able to view enhanced part of the software gradually when we talk about scrum we talk about a number of terms so let's go through all the terms first of all the artifacts the documentations and the stuff in which which are prepared in the scrum so the first one is product backlog so what is a product backlog when we want to develop a software there are n number of activities which we need to do like we have discussed before for example when you are developing a website what all you need you need a login you need a payment gateway system and n number of activities so those n number of activities all the activities which are needed to develop a software that specific software which a client wants is known as a product backlog that is all the backlog which is needed to build a product the next artifact is sprint backlog so we have studied before that in scrum we break the scrum into n number of sprints sprint objective is to build a small amount of working functionality of a software and ship it to the client for demo this product backlog is all the activity which needs to be done to build a complete software this sprint backlog it's a small set of product backlog which will be completed in that sprint n number of sprint backlog is equal to one product backlogs so in each sprint backlog we will be taking some part of product backlog and working in a sprint backlog then the burn down chart so burn down chart is after each sprint is completed we check how was the activity or the progress of that sprint like how good we were working on a sprint so it is a chart known as burn down chart so the ideal case is that it should start from here and it should end to the end so that we started at some task which we have here and at the end of the sprint it should reach to zero so that all the tasks which we are assigned are completed by end of the sprint so it is generally a inclined line from top to bottom so these are the three artifacts product backlog all the backlogs all the tasks which we need to do to develop the complete software sprint backlog all the tasks which we need to do to complete only that sprint is known as sprint backlog burn down chart is the outcome of the sprint which shows how was our progress in a sprint in a scrum there are three type of persons or the roles the persons have so the first one is product owner so there is a client who needs a software develop so what he does he approaches a company who can develop a software for him now what the company does company assigns a person the role of product owner so product owner is a person who communicates with the client and understand the requirements so he is the whole responsible person from the company who will be handling all the activities for the development of the software so that it reaches to the client he is the whole responsible for the project or the software development scrum master during the sprint as the agile says that the team should meet together once daily when a team is following a scrum there is a meeting which is held in morning daily for 10 to 15 minutes that is known as scrum meeting and scrum master 
master is a person he can be the product owner or any person who handles that meeting is known as scrum master because he handles the scrum meeting the third role is the team so the team comprises of the persons who work on the software it can be developers it can be testers it can be designers so when we talk about agile when we talk about scrum we talk about teams we do not talk about testers or developers as an individual agile does not says that agile says a developer can also work as a tester when the need arises and tester can also take part of some development agile always and the scrum always talk about the team so product owner is the concerned person from the company who handles the project scrum master is a person who handles the scrum meeting which happens daily and team is a person who actually works on the project now there are three ceremonies also first is the sprint planning so as we know that in a scrum we have a number of sprints which delivers a set of module which is developed for the software so before starting of that sprint we have a meeting known as sprint planning in that meaning we decide what we'll be doing in this sprint the next is daily scrum as discussed before that in a scrum in the morning time we have a meeting daily with all the team members product owners or clients they are not the necessary person but they may join the product owner and the client and a person known as a scrum master the so scrum master is a person who manages that meeting known as daily scrum and the third point is sprint review what the sprint review is when the sprint is completed as we have discussed what we do we ship a product a demoable product to the client which can be shipped or viewed by the client after the end of the sprint we present a demo to the client that what all the features we have developed in this sprint that meeting is known as sprint review so sprint planning before starting of the sprint the planning we do is known as sprint planning daily scrum meeting which is held daily is known as daily scrum and sprint review at the end of each sprint we have a meeting with the client where we showcase what we have developed in the sprint is known as sprint review hello friends so previously we have studied what is a sprint and the various components that is the roles the people have in the sprint what the documentations are sprint planning and all those now in this lecture we will be taking an end to end example of sprint and scrum working so let's start these are the clients which needs a software to be built they will approach a software company a service based company that we want this product to be developed let's say a e-commerce website what the company will do they will assign a person known as product owner so this client or stakeholders will always be interacting with this product owner and what they will do they will be capturing all the requirements or we can say in the term user stories and they will be naming as product backlog product backlog is the all set of activities which needs to be done during building of this e-commerce website now this product backlog is the set of all the activities and stories which needs to be taken care in this whole development phase what we will do we will start a sprint so we will say that this product backlog we won't be developing in at a once as in waterfall model 
we will say that we will take a part of this product backlog and we will develop it first what would be taken care out of this product backlog depends a number of factors like what is the priority what components can be clubbed together which features the client needs and there can be n number of reasons for starting a sprint we have a sprint meeting where we discuss all these factors also we discuss that the activities which will be developing or the backlogs which will be working on we select them that is known as sprint backlog so out of this product backlogs a number of activities are captured into sprint backlogs this sprint backlog these activities are assigned to specific persons for example let's say this activity would be done by this person this activity would be taken by this person also we will estimates the time like how much time it will be taking to complete this activity normally sprints sprints vary from duration to duration from minimum as 4 days and maximum it can stretch to 4 to 5 weeks so it depends upon the company but usually it varies from 2 to 3 weeks each sprint should be of 2 to 3 weeks at the end of the sprint we have to give a demo or ship a sample of the project to the client so since each sprint is of 2 to 3 weeks so you can expect client have a clear visibility that what teams are working on their development team is working on as they will get a status in 2 or 3 weeks so client is always aware what is going on and what they are developing so client can view it since every sprint have some deliverables out of this product backlog we take all that stuff depending upon the priority and what the customer needs first also we have to take a decision that will these sprint backlog activities would be completed in a sprint timing for example a sprint duration is of 3 weeks so we have to make sure we are taking only those must tasks which can be completed into 3 weeks once the sprint backlog is ready we start the sprint which varies from 1 to 3 weeks it depends upon projects to projects it can be 4 days it can be to 1 month also it depends upon the project so the sprint starts daily in the when the sprint start we have a daily meeting known as daily scrum who handles this daily scrum daily scrum is handled by the scrum master who owns that meeting so what we do in this daily scrums daily scrums all the members of the team come to a room a common place it's a meeting normally done during the starting of the day in the morning time and it stretches from 10 to 15 minutes there is a predefined format of that meeting every person has to give status like what he was doing yesterday what he will do today and if there is any blocker or anything which is hampering him to so that he cannot complete his work so that all the team is aware what task has been done and what are being done today if there is any blocker then it's the duty of scrum master to discuss with the person who is having the issues once the meeting is over and make sure those are resolved so that he does not have any blocker when he is doing his activity so that's the daily scrum in daily scrum every member tells what he has done yesterday what he'll be doing today and if there is any blocker which is hampering his work to be completed if there is any issues and any problem in during the daily scrums that is handled by the scrum master scrum master can be any person of the team or a separate concerned person known as scrum master once the sprint is over 
let's say of two weeks there is a product which is delivered to the client so when we say a product is delivered to the client so a minimum set of a product backlog which is known as sprint backlog is completed and delivered to the client the delivery should be as so that client can view something it should not be that we have developed something in the back end and there is nothing the client is able to view no sprint delivery means that there is something substantial so that client can view what you have done don't say that this sprint delivery is only documentation no agile says a product a software is said to be working or it's going smooth in smooth development only when you are able to view something so make sure the sprint deliveries you are selecting the sprint backlogs carefully so that it gives some representation or it can give some demo to the client once the sprint is over now once the sprint is over there are two type of meetings which are held one is sprint review and the another is retrospective sprint review is a meeting where we, all the team sit together and they interact with the client maybe the all team members are involved or maybe the some depending upon your projects they give the demo of the product they have developed in the sprint to the client so that is known as sprint review also another meeting is held that is retrospective meeting so in this meeting all team members should be available the objective of this meeting is to make sure what went good in this sprint so what was good in this sprint and what was bad in this sprint for example you can say uh, let's say you were having some internet issues with the company networks and so that you were not able to complete your task so any of the issues which were hampering your work or activity can be discussed in retrospective so here we discuss which went good in this sprint and what went bad in this sprint so that proper actions can be taken to minimize them in the next sprints so once this sprint is over we ship a demoable product to the client a sprint is over after the sprint review meeting now what we have to do we have to again go to this product backlog and again select a set of backlogs we have to sit for sprint meeting and decide the next sprint backlog that is the sprint 2 this cycle goes again and again till the final product is taken place so once this sprint backlog is developed the sprint 2 is over again we will take some part of the product backlog and sprint 3 will start this whole process for example we have a sprint of 2 weeks so this process would be happening again and again after 2 weeks so this is the scrum working as the waterfall model says waterfall model says that you have to work in phases only once a phase is complete then only the next phase starts so here you can see again and again we are taking the requirements and building something so let's take an example when sprint is completed you have given something to the client to view and if client something does not like something he gives its feedback okay so what the product owner will do he will add some more requirements to this product backlog so when the second sprint starts the changes can be easily adapted which were not possible in the case of waterfall model so this is the whole working of scrum that is a number of sprints takes place in a scrum methodology just a short overview in the scrum clients interacts with the project owner to take all the product backlogs then we start a sprint that is we have a sprint planning and we prepare a sprint backlogs the items which will be doing in this sprint then the sprint is started for it can be any time duration for 1 to 3 weeks and daily we have scrum meetings where a person tells what he has done yesterday what he will do today and if there are any blockers once the sprint is over 
the sprint delivery is made and the sprint review meeting a demo is given to the client also after the sprint we have a retrospective meeting where we discuss what went good in this meeting and what went bad in this meeting so that it can be really worked upon by the product owner and the scrum master then again we go to the product backlog and take another set of requirements and start building it in a second sprint so this sprint goes and on till the final product is delivered so that's the scrim working these are the points which we discussed in scrum meeting as we have discussed before what you did yesterday what you do today and are there any impediments in your way that is the blockers in your way we have to make sure that to keep the scrum meetings as minimum duration it should be it should not be extending to 10 to 15 minutes don't start doing the requirements and the project discussions in this meeting you only have to make sure these three activities are done now this is the scrum board you must have seen in the companies like there is a board available where there are sticky notes available and the columns are there so for example this is the product backlog it completes a complete set of stories or tasks which needs to be done sprint backlog is has taken some of the activities of product backlog into sprint backlog that is they will be working in this sprint now to track the progress of sprint we use scrum board what are the scrum boards in the scrum board we assign all the issues all the task which we need to do in sprint backlog into scrum board which gives the status of them for example open it means that these tasks are yet not started in progress means that this task is being done by some developer testing means that these tasks are in testing phase and close means that this sprint backlog item has been completed so during the execution of this sprint we can track the status of our issues by the scrum board for example this was the activity if it is tested and closed it is moved from here and moved to the closed state okay so scrum boards give the real representation how the sprint is going and how many task has been completed so by the end of the sprint we have to make sure that all these activities reaches to the closed state so once it reaches to the closed state we identify that all the sprint backlog has been tested and been closed and is ready to be delivered to the client column chart from where we can track the activities of the sprint is known as a scrum board so in this session we will be talking about an another type of process which is built on agile is known as kanban it is the next most popular process after the scrum methodology so it has four points which differentiated from the scrum the first is no fixed timelines as in sprint we have a fixed timelines for example if your sprint is of 2 weeks or 3 weeks then we are sure that after the complete of that sprint we will be delivering something to the client but here we don't have any fixed timelines second no fixed planning and meeting in scrum we have daily scrums we have sprint meetings we have retrospective meetings there are n number of meetings but here there is no fixed plan at how many meetings we will be having when they would be happening no task car estimates so how we pull the task from product backlog to sprint backlog is depending upon the estimates for example from product backlog we would be taking only that amount of task which can be completed in that sprint if your sprint is of 2 weeks so we have to make sure we are only taking that amount of work which can be completed in that amount of time but in case of kanban there are no estimates done and also there are no scrum masters so let's understand by diagram that how it differentiate from a scrum so to understand better we can understand it using a kanban board so we have a board 
known as a scrum board we have discussed this in a previous session also we have a board in kanban known as a kanban board so this is a product backlog as in scrum what we do we will take some part of activities and say that these activities we would be taking or working on this sprint but in kanban we don't have any sprint so this activity is not performed so this is the main differentiation between the scrum and kanban that in kanban there is no sprint backlogs there are no sprints so what we do in kanban when a project is started we take all the project backlog activities and put them on to do state when any person starts working on it it is moved to the doing state and when it is done it is moved to the done column if a new product or new issue comes it it directly moved to the to do state as you can see there is no process here we take all the activities and start working on it as soon as it is completed it is marked as done if you take an example of any restaurant it usually have these three columns so here are all the orders which are given to the chef doing is the orders on which the chef is working when the chef has prepared the order it has moved to the done so by this chart the chefs or the restaurant can easily track what the food recipes have developed and which they needs to develop on there is also one interesting feature of kanban board is a limit option as you can see here there were around 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 eight items but what we say that in a restaurant we have only four chefs so our four chefs can only work with four items at the same time we have set a limit of here as four so what it means that at a time only four items can start work on once the item is completed what we will take we will take one more item from product backlog and start working on it so you can set a limit in kanban at how many items a team can work on depending upon its resource so these type of models are more popular not in software development but other than it industry for example in factories in restaurants and in support tickets so there in that case the kanban is more popular so in the previous lecture we have learned that how we can add sample projects to ajira so the main objective of this lecture is that we will give you overview a complete overview what are the different components in jira and what are they in detail we will be covering in the later sections so let's start so once you sign in in your jira account for in my case it is helping testers dot atlassian dot net so you will see this dashboard it is known as a system dashboard or you can say that is the home screen for your jira account here you can find the tickets which is assigned to you by mean the tickets i mean the issues on which you need to work that are assigned to you the activity how is that your activity in which ticket you have worked where what are your comments and all those stuff like the feeds you can say so activity is just similar to your feeds these all stuff you can find on home screen suppose you want to have a pie chart or, or the count of the defects which are currently in a not closed state in your project so you want to know different different stuff you can configure these these are widgets and you have an option here which you can create your dashboard and set up your widget you can just slide it from if we go to edit we can just slide it we can change its view there can be many things you can set your home screen as per your need because if you are a developer then you are more keen in interested and want to know that what are the defects assigned to you if you are a qa you are interested for getting know that what are the defects which are in qa release that is for which are in testing status as a manager you want to check overall health of the project so depending upon the person their needs varies and so you can configure your dashboard 
So configuring of the dashboard, yes, we will be covering in detail in the next session. So here you can see, if we click on this dashboard, you will see one the view system dashboard. The current dashboard, it it is known as a system dashboard. It is defaultly created by Jira, and you can manage your dashboard. That is the customization which we will be studying in detail. On left hand side, you can also find your home, home this screen, and you can see the other Atlassian projects. So that if you are using another Atlassian projects like Confluence, uh, Help Dex, so you don't need to enter another URL or go to that. You can just configure here Confluence and just switch it. So it is very easy. The next step, it is of projects. So as you know that we have two sample projects, one for Scrum and one was Kanban. So it is showing under projects. In Jira, you can create two type of projects, software and business. Also, by create new project, you can create new projects. And by view all, you can view the projects as it is showing two projects, Kanban Scrum, their key identifiers, both are in software state. Who is the project lead? That is myself, Web of Gupta. Project category and URL because we have not mention anything as we created the sample project so you can make project create categories and assign them also if you want that instead of this url you want some custom url for your project so you can give the url here also in create project we can create a project when we created this scrum and kanban sample count so we use create sample data but when you are working with you want to have a real account you can Select a scrum development and click on next Give a project name and a key identifier You can create a Kanban or a basic software development So these three come under the software project if you want to create a business project like project management task management process management So you can opt for these Out of all these the most popular is under software that is scrum software development that is scrum project so it is the most popular of all also gives an import option so you can import a project into your this account this is all under the project section now we have issues everything in jira is an issue either you raise a defect in a software that is also an issue you create a task for a developer to work on that is also an issue you create any epic that is also an issue so everything in jira is called an issue so under issues you can find different sections like you can find the search you can search from search issue from these points recent issues last issues which you are viewing will come under this category import issues you have a csv file and you want to import so jira gives a wonderful option of importing you can select all the issues which are assigned to you. You can check all the issues that are reported by you. And manage filters. So if we click on manage filter, you will see option. You can create your customized filter in this section. You can search, search the issues. So currently it is giving me all the issues in my project. So you can search the issues. We will be covering this the whole section that what are these field what are issues what is searching there are definitely dedicated lectures for understanding these topics for now you have to just know that under the issues you can search for an issue and the various filters board as we speak that this project that is let's say scum project overall working of a project can be viewed by a scrum board that is the scrum board so if i go let's say to the scrum board so it will give me an overview of the sprint of the current sprint it says that in this sprint under to do section we have to work on two more tasks currently two tasks are in progress and three tasks have been in done state so it is overall print current situation so board is a place where you can get overall status of your current sprint so similarly if we look for the kanban board it will be almost similar 
here you can see there is no backlog no in development two are in progress and three are in done state so it's a kanban board if i move this is a create symbol so create symbol is for creating an issue so if i click on create you can select on which project you you want to create a scrum project you want to select or kanban or what you want to create that is a story task bug or epic what four are these we'll be covering okay let me give a brief introduction to these first of all what is an epic suppose you want to build a website a e-commerce website so your epic could be you can say it is a major functionality in your project we need to integrate payment gateway we need to develop the whole website ui the major functionality can be epic so if your project you must be having four to five epics at least what are stories for each epic we define user stories like if the epic was that we need to integrate the payment gateway so what it stories can be stories can be first of all story has to be in a form of as a user what i want to do and what will i will achieve for example a story would be as a user i will buy a handset through hdfc internet banking so that it can be delivered at my home it's a process as a user i will use hdfc card to do a payment and buy a product first story second story as a user if my transaction get declined user money would be refunded these are the tasks as a user or you can say these are the use cases which needs to be done so in a epic what all use cases are there are called as story story as written considering the user aspect however task tasks are the development aspect i just repeat like there was a story as a user if my transaction get declined my money should be refunded or user money should be refunded so this was a story it was a use case but a task credit money back to account in case of transaction failure so it can be the task which developer needs to do will develop a sandbox for payment gateway so these are the task which developer needs to do developer team will develop a sandbox for payment gateway no it's not a use case it's a developer task so first of all if we convert break a project then it is divided into epics for epics we define use cases as a user what he will be doing then for those stories we create the task which our development team would be working on and as you are aware what is a bug when a software is prepared and the tester team is testing and whenever they found any issues in the development code they report it as a bug from this section you can create an issue you can create an epic you can create a story you can create a task you can create a bug now this section is a my profile section if you go to my profile so you can see my details my email id and my activity streams you can do a log out here i am logged in as a system administrator so it giving me the settings of an administrator Uh, these are the other options a help section and here you can send a mail if you have any queries directly to the jira a uh, support team and uh, this is the global search available in the jira that's good overview of dashboards projects issues boards create so these are the main we will be working on settings we have a dedicated lecture which will be talking about the admin settings in jira in the last lecture we have a very good overview of a jira tool as a whole in this lecture we will be taking this create section as it is the main section of the jira account so currently i have been logged in as a administrator so first of all let me let uh, show you how we can invite other users in our account so i have to use site administration and use this user management 
and let me give this name as a developer and email I have this my old email I will use this okay and create user I must have received in my account from Jira so it's a sign up to join so let me log out from my account so that this developer can open an account in Jira so it's asking my full name full name is app automator at the rate gmail dot com choose a password I am not a robot yes I am not and sign up I want the English language and it's asking me to to when after next so what I want to do I want to let's say explore the current project so let's say sample project now I have been logged in as a developer and you will see there are no settings option available here because I am a developer not an admin let me go to my Jira dashboard so I don't have any issues assigned to me yes because I have created account just now so no issues is assigned and this is the activity that is the feed section we have to start with create so when I create click on create first is the project currently as a developer I have been assigned to two projects that is scrum sample project and Kanban sample projects so we will work with scrum sample project I have already shared that what's the difference between epic bug task and story so first of all let's make an epic epic name a short name would be epic one for easy memorizing it summary summary for epic one and here you can give the description fixed version that in which version this epic would go let's say version one the priority it's the priority of an epic let's say it is the highest priority labels labels are for to easily distinguish for example nowadays you are doing testing on mobile devices now if you're working on Android or iPhone devices there can be n number of devices n number of devices in comparison to their versions also so it is not possible to make some epics or stories specifically for each device so when I'm doing testing and I found okay this issue was for Nexus version 5.2 so I can just sorry Nexus version 1.2 so if there is epic uh, sorry if there is a label it will give the name if not it will create a new label so by this what will happen whenever I want to fetch the reports I will just give this label so whatever issue in which this label is tagged with this label will show up so it is mainly used for searching of the issues for example if I put a label for iPhone 5 and when I'm searching for defects so all those defects in which the label was iPhone 5 that is the defect was for iPhone 5 will be listed drop files for attachment if you want to attach any file issue blocks by so it is regarding let's for example you want to develop a login functionality on a screen and you are blocked because the designs are not available yet so what you can do that this issue is blocked by with some another issue which says designing the login screen because the designs are not available so you cannot start coding 
There can be some other cases. Duplicates. For example, there were two testers testing an application. One of the tester has raised a defect and another tester has also raised the same defect. Now when developer is fixing those issues, he checks that he has already fixed the issues which were raised by tester 1. So what he will do? He will mark that issue as a duplicate of first issue. Assignee to whom you want to assign, you can assign to Web of Gupta or you can assign to yourself or no assign to me. You want to link is this epic and this sprint. In which sprint you want to do this? So the current sprint is sample to sprint. That of this sample scrum, sprint 2 is going, one has been closed. And you can click on create. So you can just open this here and you will see that a issue has been created. If you go to your Jira dashboard, you will find now you see assigned to me because the epic this epic you have, you have assigned it to yourself so it is giving here also in the feeds it is giving that app automator has created this epic similarly you can create a defect let's say for this project only i want to create a defect that is a bug and what is the summary forgot password emails are not receiving so you can give the summary description fixed version in which version needs to be fixed priority of the ticket that it needs to be fixed right now or it is a blocker so you can say it's of high environment let's which environment it is of attachment and all those stuff issues assignee epic link in which sprint you have found which epic under it comes currently we have one epic right which was created epic one so you can give all those details where you found this issue and you can click on create also you can check this box that is create info and as soon as it is created it will again reopen this pop-up it's saying that the old issue has been created successfully and I want to now create a next issue. Yes, the issue has been created. And here you file this customs field that uh, it says that we have to give project issue type. So you can use custom also. Like for example, description. I am saying I don't want description. So you will see that description section has went off. I say that I want the description section. It has come. So depending upon my needs, I can configure it. It is done by the users. And these values, these customized values can be managed by the admin that which field should be there. So this is how we can create our issues. If I refresh again my Jira account, you will see it is not showing because I will tell you reported by me. I have reported that bug but it is unassigned so if I assign it to me don't worry we will be covering this screen I just want to show you it here on the dashboard that this is the bug there is the difference also this was an epic and you can see the icon here this was a bug so it is showing in red this is an identifier the project identifier SSP and it has given a name so by this SSP you can easily recognize to which project it is and this 25 represents the identifier. So this is how the epic can be created. If you have any issues or questions you can just log on the QS feed and I will be very happy to resolve them. When you are learning Jira don't think that after watching this videos you will be able to learn. It is a very easy tool. Create your account and try it yourself. Try creating feeds, try creating defects, try creating epics, link them, link the issues. So this way you will be able to learn much better. So practice these, please practice, create epics, create defects. Once an issue is created, let's see how does it look like. So let's go to issues and search for issues. So these are all the issues. If you go, it's a bug, it's a epic, it's a story. Let's select this story. 
you will find here first of all there is the project mention as our project is scrum sample project identifier that is ssp and a unique number which is given then description let me open this create also so we can easily map if some issues is found we are looking into a story okay you can see the type is story and the status is done now we have not talked about from where this status come actually in jira there is a workflow now what is a workflow workflow is the main backbone of jira any issue which is created either it's a bug defect epic story is created has a status that is new for example during the course of the time we want to check what is status either it is closed and fixed either some developer is working on it either issue is at the qa end and it is currently being tested whether that issue cannot be resolved because of some blocker issue so whatever the status it it is shown here currently our project is configured for which which status can be checked from here that is view workflow so currently our issue can have three status that is to do status done status and in progress to do status means that it is new it has been created but currently no one is working on that issue in progress means that some developer qa professional or anyone is working on that issue currently done means that issue has been closed this all section means that from any state the issue can go to any state like from to do state it can that go to in progress from in progress it can go to done for when the issue is done we can again reopen it and again do start working on it that is in progress so it can be configured the, according to a project needs this workflow can be configured which will be studying in our admin section when we'll be covering the admin section so currently this project has these three states so currently it is showing done that means a developer has worked on it and it is closed and you will find these three workflows here as it is in done state so it can go to any state to do or in progress state so it is showing here to do state in progress state or done state we can change the state for example if i click on in progress its state will change to in progress when i say done its state will change to done so by status we can check what currently this issue status is now there is a priority priority tells that what is the priority in terms of let's say there was a defect a defect that user is not able to log in and there is a another defect that the spelling of login is incorrect so definitely the first defect in which the user is unable to log in has a very high priority in comparison to a spelling mistake so developer will have to fix the highest priority ticket first that is user is unable to log in resolution state resolution state speaks let's say if it is in progress so if you go here currently it is showing as unresolved if i mark it as done it will show as done so there can be many configuration states currently only these two are defined because let's say if a ticket is marked as done then there can be n number of reason first resolution can be it was fixed another resolution can be it cannot be fixed third resolution can be not fixing in this sprint so there can be n number of reasons by which this issue is being closed so as per your project it can be configured and during the ticket is closed it can be marked version 
our project has assigned versions we can select the versions in which version it will be fixed because it is not sure that a defect or an issue created for a specific version will be done in that version no so that's why there is two reason the version which is affecting and the version it will be fixing labels yes we have talked about it the sprint in which sprint we found this issue or this issue will be fixed assignee assignee is someone to which we have asked to work on it so let's say assign i was working a developer was working on this issue so developer who has reported this this is my manager webhav gupta voting is an interesting factor so i can vote this uh, currently i don't have access uh, admin has not given developer the access to to vote for this issue how how voting works some uh, suppose there are 10 number of tasks needs to done the managers do they vote on the issues which needs to be fixed first yes there can be priority also and this is the second factor which is looked on the issue which has larger number of votes would be of much importance and would be fixed or would be worked on first watchers watcher means that if i select add to watch list so now it is showing me one so what it means if i click on this it will say developer if i want my manager to also add in a watcher list so i can add his name and it will show okay there was an error because i uh, he was an admin vabhav gupta is an admin and so i cannot add him as a watcher but if we have another testers and developers in our project then we could add him as a watcher and it should have shown too being a watcher is that if any activity is done on a ticket by anyone then as a developer i would be receiving notifications in the form of email in my inbox so this is how it works for example i have said that i am not able to work on this story because i have not receive the ui designs suppose i have commented we have a comment section cannot work on this as designs not available okay and i have clicked on add so let's say there was a admin or ui team which have prepared the designs and now he commented me shared the designs so as soon as he will add comment i will receive a notification in my inbox that ui designs have been updated shared the ui designs sorry for my spelling mistakes shared the designs so this is how the watcher list works so suppose you want that you raised some issue or you want that to keep someone in loop suppose you created a defect and you want that your test lead should also know about this issue and he should also be informed about this issue so you can add him to the watch list and it's a date it's a small section which gives the detail that when this ticket was created issue was created when it was last updated and when it was resolved that is mark developed from here is showing the details of the sprint you can directly go to the view board you can add description here also it's you see the jira is quite configurable at any point you can configure and add data to it you can add a chat attachments also comments section show the comments work logs activities on that history any history section so these are all the tabs for example work log no work log has been assigned history any activity which has been done on this issue in case of comments comments shows just the comments so these are just self explanatory you can assign this issue to anyone you can assign it from here or here you can comment also the same feature which is shown below you can edit it so again a create issue a window will open 
having the same data and you can enter anything here any data here you can share this you can export this and some uh, all these I uh, stuff present here those stuffs you can do from here as well so we have covered workflow one more thing I want to show you we skipped in the first lecture by creating the issue is when we click on create so suppose I am creating a new story you will see now a field is coming as original estimate before when we created an issue there was not this field because in our project it was not configured so I went and opened the admin panel and configured this field so that's why it is showing what this estimate field show this estimate field show how much time will it take to complete these tasks so Jira allows two type of ways by which we can assign the time firstly you can say that it will take two hours it will one week you can mention one week one hour whatever is so you can mention in terms of hours or you can mention in terms of story points Jira story points what are story points when you're mentioning the hours you are precise that in this hour the issue will be resolved but it is not always you know how much time it will take so we mention story points how story points work suppose in a sprint we have identified that these 10 issues will be covered in this sprint so we can select from the backlogs those many issues which are exactly equal to two weeks and we can work on it but it is not always possible again to get the hours so what we do we take a issue and say okay it is an easy issue we give it two story points now that's the baseline now we check for another issue and after comparing it to the first one we think okay it is more harder and time consuming than the first one so let's give it story point four because it is twice as complexity of the first one now you analyze the third issue you identify it is easy so you give a story point as three so story point says that you give points in comparison relative to a story you don't know the exact time it is not that two day days is equal to two story points or two hours is equal to two story points no story points are relative so if I say if this ticket is taking one story point to complete and here it is mentioned two story point then it means that if this story is taking 10 hours to complete it might take 20 hours to complete this story so it is a relative by which we give the story points in industry teams work both the ways sometimes when they have done similar type of projects and they are well aware of the product they give the hours if they are not sure about the complete functionality and it's of new technology then they work in terms of story points in this lecture we covered how this view of the issue look likes and what are workflows and what are story points so in the last lecture we covered about the issues what are the various field of the issues we study about the workflow we studied about the how we can allocate time in uh, an issue that is through hours or through story points so in this lecture we will be covering about the boards so what board is this one so what actually the board is board actually displays the current status or you can say health of our sprint so as you know we have two projects going one is the Kanban and the another is a sample scrum board so let's go to the scrum board so this is how your scrum board looks like so in this scrum board are three sections 
issues which are in to do issues which are in progress and in done so it depends upon the workflow as we have seen that in a workflow we have three states to do in progress and done so that's the reason it is divided into three columns it can be more or less columns depending upon our administration has configured our jira but normally it remains the same as the number of workflow states so to do shows that all the tickets which needs to be done on in progress which are in progress and done meets which are completed so you can see the status here that it is a sub task it is allocated to webhav gupta the identifier and the priority that it is of medium priority similarly all others are also listed when you tap on any of this issue it is displayed on the right hand side and you can find all the details here you can work on it and you can do any changes here as well if you want to open this in a full view so you can just tap on it and it will open in the full view you can just click back and go to the board once again and let us close this so when a ticket is moved from in progress to done then it is shifted to the next column for example if i change its state i have to open it okay and i move from in progress i move to done it is ssp12 then let me get to manage boards and you can see it is removed from here ssp12 now it is showing under the done section similarly you can drag and drop also you can see the feasible states any issue which is in to do as per the workflow it can be shifted to in progress or in done so by changing in the ticket here we can instead of doing this we can just drag and drop this to the another section similarly drag and drop to the other section so i can drop it here as well so similarly we can do drag and drop also you will see that uh, it is a current sprint that is it's the second sprint going on you will find the time that in how much time this current sprint would end so currently it is showing 4 days it is showing complete sprint on clicking on this this sprint will close and here are some shortcuts now this is the overall manage board for scum project you can only check or these all issues can be assigned to anyone in the team but if you are only interested in the issues which is assigned to you you can just click on only my issues so i can see that two epics are assigned to me and both are in to do state similarly recent updated shows that in recently all the issues which are being updated you can move the this only issues if you tap again it will be removed you will find some more tabs here like this is a backlog when we were learning the scrum project we studied the project owner the project owner identifies all the backlogs that all the task which needs to be done he identifies let's say 100 task and then he start with sprint 1 that is if his sprint 1 is let's say of 2 weeks then he move the task from product backlog which are exactly can be completed in one sprint and move it to the sprint so this is a backlog so when a sprint was started from the backlog issues were added to the sprint 2 now if a new sprint here is an option for create sprint if i create a new sprint let's say if i do a create a sprint let's say sprint 3 then i can drag and drop from the product backlog 
to this print right so similarly i can create other sprints and issues from the backlog can be shifted to it accordingly so i am considering here that these three issues will be covered in sprint 3 so this is how it is displayed jira provides easy drag and drop option between the issues what you can do you can delete this print with these three dots available out of these prints if you are only interested for my issues you can just click on my issues as we can see that only in sprint 2 i have one issue allocated to me and similarly for the recently updated items in this each row you can find many details like first detail it showed whether it is a bug or a story then the brief subject of the issue the signee the identifier the priority and the time like this for this was a bug so no time is allocated to it it is not possible to give how much time was will be spent on this bug but this is a story and we have a time allocated not a time allocated in this sample project they are following the story points so it is showing five story points and if we see it's showing two story points you see so i so what it means that this task would be finished in less than half time of this task so this is how we can say story points work we have not given the time but we know that how much time relatively they will take so it gives the total time of a sprint by calculating this it identifies that six storage task has been done five is under process and three story point stars is not yet been started here you will find some another information as well as versions you can specify the versions also we can see that currently this story has been assigned a version this story has assigned a version this is not an assigned a version so there are two ways either you can go through this ticket assign a version let's say 2.0 and i come back so you can see 2.0 is versions allocated or you can just drag and drop let's say i want this to be in version 3 i drop it into 3 and it will show version 3 similarly you will find epics here so i want this to be in epic 1 i will move it here and it will show an in epic and the another way is i can drag and drop from here and add, add epic to it so how epics can be created and versions can be created new versions can be created will be covering in later section in this section our main idea is to showcase the manage port so this is how we can manage our backlog section here in the manage ports this is the active sprint which we have already gone through that how it is managed next is the releases it gives the releases details and these are the reports these are the reports you can get from your current sprint we will be covering some reports the majorly used reports in our reports section and these are the issues so that was all that was all for the manage board this was the manage board for scrum project let's look for the kanban project how it differs from the scrum project if i go to kanban project we can see that it does not have so much change in comparison to scrum project let me open a ticket and check it workflow so it has to do state done in progress that is to do in progress done and they have additionally added a backlog also so it is almost same that of the sprint but uh, in case of sprint is of limited type kanban does not have so much time it is a occurring process 
so there you won't find any option for close print or something like this but you will notice that this is being highlighted the reason is that in Kanban we can specify the number of items which issues can be present in a row. As you can see in process it is mentioned that maximum one issue can be available and we have two so that is why it is showing being highlighted. And you can see now it is not red. If I move back it is again showing it red because the maximum limit is one. Now why is the maximum limit as we have talked about about the Kanban model uh, considering the example of MACD restaurant. Let's say only three chefs are possible which can handle only three orders at a time that is in progress can be maximum three. In case of high demand if let's say five orders are placed simultaneously and if we add five items in this it will show red because only max three items can be processed in parallel so this is how we can maintain the work so it was a dashboard and similarly we have releases reports we have only issues assigned to me recently updated except from this everything is similar for the kanban and scrum board in scrum board we have sprint while in kanban it depends upon the number of issues hello friends welcome to this lecture so this lecture is dedicated to it to the search functionality as you know that in a sprint or when you are working in a project there can be number of issues like there can be number of defects there can be number of tasks so there can always be need suppose you want to search okay there was a task to let's say home functionality i want to search that task so one scenario is that you will be going through all the tasks and will identify or you can search that task you want to search for a specific bug reported by someone then you can search for it so jira provides various options of searching and it is a very powerful Jira also supports as like SQL it also supports query like language that is known as Jira query language. So you can write a query and get the data right from the database. So it has a very strong search functionality. Also there is a search option here it's a basic search you can just write here and it will be searching as a text. So mostly uh, this this search is not used. The search which is used is if we go to issues, if we go to this issues, you will find a search for issues. If you click on this search for issues, it has listed all the issues which are pr present in a, this Jira account. Like you can see these are the tabs or the filters you can say for it is selecting all projects issues, all type issues, all, all you can see. So it contains all of the issues. So currently in my Jira account total 37 issues are present. How you can search for an issue? Suppose you want to see only the issues which are related to specific project. Like there are two projects, a scrum sample project and Kanban sample projects. So we are interested only in scrum sample project. So when I check this box, click it here. Now you can see all these issues are related to scrum sample project and you can see the count has also gone down before it was 27 now it is showing 25 issue type as you can see here issue in issues it has everything it's the bugs are present epic are present story are present but I am only interested let's say in the bugs I want to only see the bugs so in this project they are currently four bugs associated you can click on here these bugs and can verify the details like the description is present and all those issues functionality is present the tabs are present right if i let's say interested in stories so now what i have done i have selected bug and stories but i am only interested in stories so i will uncheck the bug 
so it has listed me all the stories which are present in scrum project and they are total of 17 stories status status we have three status for story they can be done to do or progress so let's say i am only interested how many stories still needs to be done so currently eight stories which are need to be done and let me see how are in pro how much are in progress currently one is in progress and let's see in the done account and the eight are done assigning so i want to check all those stories for the project scrum which are completed and were assigned to the developer the developer was assigned only one story so like this way you can search you can search for any text also let's say i let's say all here assign to all and text say i like uh, clicking any text any story which has clicking text so it has two stories it has searched for two stories having the text keyword in them as you can see this story has subject line keyword and this story must also have yes this click and yeah so it's a smart search it has also listed a story which is having the click in it similarly you can find another options here as well let me delete this click so as you can see these are the basic filters and these are which are less used like suppose i want to check for the issues which are created you have this created field here right this so i want to check all the issues which are created in this week so you can find created date so this is created so this must be the created date like you can also search created yeah whose created date and you will open this box it's saying what the how the time you want to give it is the time you want to say that it was created last for let's say two days four days 20 minutes more than in between the dates you want to specify or the range so it's a very smart let's say i want to check for all the issues which are created in the last week in the last let's say in the last days in the last five days or let's say seven days and if i do an update so no no story was moved done let me click for all status okay so within the last seven days eight issues were created and if i say within last 15 days 10 issues were created you see how the filter is changing if i say that all the issues which are created let's say one hour before no matches found let us create an issue to verify it so in the scrum project i want to let's say create a bug and summary will be spelling mistake on logo fault and let's do a create again run this filter okay so this is the one hour filter again do it i have to just refresh it let's oh the issue is that story it was story so let me create a bug okay i created a bug so that's why i have changed the filter for the bug and now you can see within the last one hour one bug is created and it has shown spelling mistake on logo and i have made this <laughs> it's spelling also wrong so anyhow so this is how the search works the basic search works similarly you can just select let's say epic link so currently there is one epic so you can click all those issues which are assigned to specific epic so currently no 
no issues have been linked to an epic now let me assign this to an epic okay and okay i assign this to an epic so search all the issues which are in project scrum issue type bug status all signy all created with the last r and whose have epic as one okay and if i do an update see it is again found that so it is a very easy search and he can do the searching as per their needs so these are all fields which are present you can search on the basis so you can search on basis of them for example you want to search for all the issues whose resolution type is unresolved so you can see you can find here resolution sorry sorry for my yeah this is the resolution so you can type whose resolution is done won't do duplicate cannot reproduce let's say let me cancel this one hour if there is present no there is not any ticket closed an issue resolved with a resolution cannot reproduce so it's a very easy search uh, nothing special in it just there are drop downs select drop downs as per your needs and the respective result would be shown it's a very powerful search which is given by jira so in the previous lecture you have studied about the basic search now there are limited options which you can perform with this basic search suppose you want to do some advanced searching then you have to go for this advanced feature okay let's delete this for now okay so this is the basic feature and this is your advanced feature okay now jira provides a jql language if you have worked or have knowledge of sql then it is almost similar with jql if you don't know sql don't worry we will be covering it we need a basic i have a basic search which says all those issues or let make this a default one let again go to search for issues so this was the default search which was present at all projects and all if i click on advanced how i can execute this query suppose i want to get all the projects that is projects so i want to get all the project which and it will itself give what projects you can select i want to select the project scrum board and i want to display the issues issue type and issue type is equal to you can select one if you want let's say first select only the issue type which are equal to story and if i click on search it has found me all the issues which are of story type and are assigned to project scrum now if i click on basic here you will find that that advanced is converted into a basic filter you can see the project is selected and the story now if i let's say update i want to select bug also okay so all the bugs and stories which are assigned to this project now i click on advanced so you can see that it is updated when we need to select from single let's say issue type is equal to v what we used issue type is equal to story suppose i want to give two values so how we can do we can write issue type in and then bracket opens and then you can select bug or let's say story let's say ep epic whatever you can go on and you can click on search so you can write you can do the basic search and you can do the this search also and i want to search the issues whose created date created date is greater than equal to let's say start of the day two days so it has listed me that today a bug was raised and it has given me now if i go you can see now 
this basic filter is not available. The reason is that this query, this query is not available in basic search. In basic search, you can select whose created date is greater than let's say one hour or two hour, but you won't have these functions start of the day. So it cannot be converted to basic search. If I delete this and I click on enter, now you can convert it into a basic search, right? So this is how basic and advanced filter work. Also, you can write and assignee. This is the reporter and assignee. So whose assignee is equal to, it should be, yeah, it should assignee would be developer. So there were only three issues which are assigned to the developer. And similarly, you can go on any field, like say, whose fixed version and fixed version is equal to version 2.0. Only one issue. You can go on, try learning it and you will f start using it. I tell you that when you let's say have worked for GR two or three months, you won't be using the basic filter. You will find this advanced feature very handy and very useful. One more thing, like you can use and, you can use or also. Like for project is equals to this or. So one way is you can reuse project in Kanban sample project or Scrum sample project. So it will give all the issues which are present in both the projects or you can do an or project is equals to Kanban or project sorry not priority project is equals to scrum so you can see there are total 38 issues and with this filter you'll find still 38 so or so it's 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 a simple thing that what is an and or all you must have studied in logic filters and in sql so it is the same meaning and or in equal to not equal to so when you do something so it already will pop up all the options you can choose so not equal to can bend okay that's wrong two equals symbol yeah you can see 26 issues so it has given me all the issues which are not in project kanban you uh, you can also find it in the documentation uh, you can go to the search and find that last in documentation regarding how the advanced feature works what our functions are what the function do but i don't think that you would be needing this just play with it around and that is enough if you have any query just post it in the right panel and we would be happy to help you out. So in the previous lectures, we have heard about the search feature and the advanced search feature. But it's a type of uh, irritating that whenever you want to search something, you have to write the GQL coding or you have to use the basic search. So it's, it's a type of irritating. So what the Jira has done, they have given you the filters. Filters is that you can save your searches which can be reused later so that you don't need to have to write again and again if we go to issues and let's say go to search only so in the left hand side you will find the filters some filters are defaultly created by Jira for example my open issues all those issues which are open by me you can see whose assignee is current user current user means myself so it has listed all the issues which are assigned to me let's say web hub web hub so these are all assigned to me the next filter is reported by me all those filters which are reported by me so this is reported by me and it is still un unassigned it you give you all issues all the issues whose state is currently open 
okay and similarly there are some default filters now I want to search all the issues let's say for project scrum so for project scrum scrum sample project and assignee is current user and issue type issue type is let's say story and if I do a search so there are currently seven issues and you have a feature here save as so when I click on save as so you can save this filter and you can let's say name is my open issues my open let's say to be precise story in scrum project and I will click on submit so you will find a favorite filter this is the filter so let me go to an another page so whenever I want to check all the stories which are in project scrum and assigned to me I need to just click on it and that search would come let me share you a very wonderful task that how these filters are really helpful suppose in your team is having let's say some bugs and today you are finding those bugs and developer is fixing those bugs at the end of the day what the duty of tester is that at the end of the day he have to give the status of the build status can be find in terms of how many bugs are closed today how many bugs are still open today right and how many bugs are still needs to be fixed so you can get this data easily through this filter let's see how now let me create three bugs first just name it as bug one and just leave it default everything to be default and then make it bug two enter and bug three so I want to see all the project all the issue type which are equal to bug so currently there are eight bugs and if we see the status to do to do so let's do one thing let's make it an in progress let's make it done different different states because uh, some are raised uh, some are fixed by developer and some are closed and some are being fixed make it as done what I need to do at the end of today I have to share a report first of all how total bugs are there so this give me total number of bugs in this project so let me save as total bugs okay and all those bugs and whose status status is equal to that is to do that we have raised a bug but developer has not start working on it because when he will start working on it its status would be in progress and when he has fixed the bug its status would be done so search it and let's say open bugs okay all those bugs whose are in progress okay so save it as progress bugs and all those bugs which are all well, this much is sufficient so you have this easy filters right
just I'm changing the priority of the box okay and make it as lowest now at the end we need to shoot a mail to our project manager that this is the status of our build by telling him the number of bugs so these are four to five bugs so we can easily able to identify it now if I go to projects and if I go to my project scrum project just a second guys report sorry yeah under this filter you will find reports under this pie chart report okay this is your project uh, so which filter you want to choose I want to choose my filter as op uh, total bugs there was a filter for total bugs right so if I select so what type of report I want to get I want to get let's say priority report and I click on next so what you get you get that total number of issues were a total number of bugs are eight whose priority are one is high one is lowest and one is medium so suppose at the end of the day you want to share report with the manager that how many bugs are raised today of which status you can just get the data from here and you can even even copy paste this pie chart there are many things you can work with it let again say total bugs and you can choose status okay this is the status you can tell your manager that out of these eight bugs four are fixed three needs to be started and one bug is being fixed it you can just copy this image and paste it in your email or you can copy this table so it is very easy it is eight but suppose think there are hundreds of bugs so it is not easy to calculate which bugs are done which are needs to be done which are in progress so three this reports which can be generated through filters are very good so depending upon your need you can create many filters so you can find a filter and it gives the status the fields you want to have value of issues like issues have components issue type priority projects so you can get the data for these type of fields so this is how the filters are important through filters you can create customized report and you can share with your managers plus you don't need to write search query again and again so just play around it generate some filters and show their reports and uh, I'm sure it would be very helpful especially for the testers also because these charts can be just copy pasted to your reports in this lecture we will be talking about the dashboard now what is the dashboard when you log into your account the Jira account the first screen you see is your dashboard and by default you will be seeing a system dashboard now considering a situation let's say you are a developer and you want to see what issues are assigned to it so you will first log in here you will go to search for issues or if you have saved a filter you will use that or you will do a search query or you will say uh, my open issues let's say suppose this activity whenever a bug is fixed you are doing this activity to check it now what the Jira says even if you are if you are able to save five seconds an activity you are doing 20 times a day that would be around four to five minutes let's say so if you are able to save four to five minutes then it is good and you are doing this activity daily so Jira has done customization on its dashboard also so Jira says the activities you want to check regularly just showcase them on the dashboard so you don't need to go inside the Jira tool it saves your time and your efforts also you can customize this dashboard so currently what you can see on the system dashboard is an introduction to the Jira all the issues which are assigned to you 
and the uh, the project status the feed status so uh, this is default dashboard one effectiveness of this is is that uh, in, you are a big you are a big project and you want to show overall health of a project the let's say the sprint how the sprint is going on or and those stuff graphs so you can connect to a projector and show as view as a wall board and it will be shown in the projector can also opt for view board in slideshow so it will be coming a slideshow one advantage is this also so let's see how you can make your custom dashboard so dashboard section is here so you can opt for system dashboard or manage dashboard or you can go here and you can say create your own dashboard give it a name uh, let's say demo dashboard or give it a name more logical my dashboard and description leave it blank start from blank dashboard okay and to whom I want to share this so I want to share this with the project can meant all those who are assigned to scrum sample project and all and I click on add so you need to click this add okay so it will be here and just create so a dashboard will be created with two widgets so you can edit the layout also like uh, you want to have one widget four two let's say have pick this one okay I think that seems the logical itself this is logical okay now we can add the gadgets or the data which will be shown in this gadgets click on this you will find this uh, we load more gadgets so uh, they have segregated under charts you want to show charts Jira other wall board let's say charts and I want to see the chart for let's say created versus resolved chart okay add it here and through Jira I want to see the activity stream assigned to me okay I want to that's all that's all from here you can see what is saying you it's saying that assigned to me it's assigned to me gadget and how many results to show let me say 15 what fields I want to show priority let's say I want to also show the created date and when I want this to be refreshed I want this to be refresh after 15 minutes and save it once I save it you can see here assigned to me tickets are coming with all the fields which I mentioned I mentioned customized created field also and it is being shown here let's go down the activity screen I asked for and just save it automatically refresh the activity stream and this is created versus resolve chart no filter project selected let's say give it a name AA and C okay so for this a filter needs to be created let's remove this the gadget we have to make a filter it's a filter that you need to select a filter regarding how many tickets are closed and how many were added so let's add an easy filter so it can be showcased Oh, okay pie chart okay. this pie chart filter okay let let us add that filter one filter which we have created for the bugs let's say this was the total bugs and by let's say status I want to show the graph in status not the epping link the status and I click on save I can move it also here I will move it here so it looks with neat and clean okay so this is my home page so once I log into my account instead of the system dashboard I will be shown as my dashboard and what I was interested in assigned to me tickets which I just get it from here I can check the pie chart of how many total bugs are there that out of these bugs in the project of this print one is in progress three needs to be done and four is done I would get the 
overall health of the project also the activities stream so whatever you want to show as you can make that filter and you can show it here so now if uh, I want to know overall status of the bugs I, or the issues I can get it from here and I can also check the issues assigned to me so I don't need to go inside the Jira it will save a lot of my time you can still edit your layout you can use this or whatever layout you want you can have that three layout you can so whatever you want it's it's totally customizable so you must be checking now that how why <laughs> you must be getting the answer why Jira is popular you must be seeing the customizations we are able to do with the help of Jira tool so that's all that's all we studied in this lecture about the dashboard how we can customize the dashboard and we can create our own dashboards in this lecture we will be talking about the board section yes we have discussed about the manage boards in the I think the second section but in this we will be studying more concepts so we have divided into two lectures in one lecture we'll be studying this functionality and all those tabs present here and in the second lecture we will seeing the board settings that how you can customize this board so let's start so as you see that this is the board for our sample project which is a scrum project and as you can see the sprint 2 is going on also you can find some the zero days remain it says this sprint would be closed today by this you can complete this sprint you will have some options let's say hide menu will hide the upper menu show menu this board is divided into some section that is known as a swim lane so you can collapse our swim lane so there are two swim lanes this and this so these have been collapsed and you can expand all swim lanes epic you can see this epic is listed here you can hide that epic and you can show that epic you can find the print card print card is a printable version of the issue so you can just print this out as the name suggests print card you will find here two more sections like only my issues like uh, if I am a developer I am in least interested by all other issues and it is difficult to find here so just click on it and you will find only issues reported to me so my account I am currently login with web of Gupta account and you can see all the issues are assigned to me similarly recently updated issues so these are the issues which have been recently updated that is the task has been updated resolution has been updated or whatever the reason is but they have been recently updated to uncheck the this uh, tab you have to click on that tab only so we are currently viewing the active sprint so there are different modes available here you can click on backlog so in the backlog it gives you a backlog view like this is the backlog as we have discussed in the first uh, section that in a scrum what we do a project manager decides a number of tasks known as backlogs and the he create a sprint that is he move task from backlog to the sprint and he that's way he start a sprint so you can find currently two sprints sprint two sprint three and a backlog section you can create a sprint from here we'll be covering this we will be making a separate section we will be covering how project is started and closed a sprint is started and closed in a Jira so in that we'll be covering that how to create a sprint and how backlogs are created and move sprint is made so those stuff would be covered there so similarly here also you can click on only my issues and recently updated issues next is the active sprint which we have already checked and this is releases so we can make releases so currently we have two versions that is version 2 and 3 so it would give the report of it as you can see in green states the task which have been completed so for this version there are currently three tasks in which two needs to be done and one is completed 
for version 2 they are currently 11 issues 4 are done 3 are in progress and 4 needs to be to do so through this tab you can get a quick know that when we can make the release and what the progress are you can click on released and like you can see this version 1 is released so you can get its detail that this was having five issues and four were done and one is still not done but we made the release to the client it was release was made on 18 june and this version is expected to be go on, release on 2nd of july so this is the release version here these are the report section so in the from this section you can generate very fancy reports we have a section of reporting and we'll be covering that what these reports are not all the reports as jira gives a lot of reports here you can uh, explore them but we'll be covering two or three the major reports like burn down reports velocity charts so which we can, will be covering it's not an easy you can just click on report and it will give you details what these are but yes we'll be covering the major reports issues issues as this is the same section as we go from here but you will notice one thing that here is not a search bar here the reason is that uh, this issues is only specific to the project while this issue was the global issue so you can see view all issues and filters so it has gone to this issue if I navigate back it will give me a project issues that is this one specific to that project all the issues specific to that project so you can switch the filter also my open issues all those these are only specific to that project uh, and this components is leave that part I, I, it's it's not of any relevance I invite your team you can as I am logged in with the admin account so I can invite the team members to this project by entering their email also I can go to the project settings the same second setting the administrator have from this setting icon we will be covering this our administrator section so this is all uh, that's all in the manage board you can configure and see thing in the next lecture we'll be covering how we can manage boards actually this is a board and sometimes we want to have different view different colors we are swim lanes as i told that these horizontal sections are known as swim lanes this horizontal name we want to name it different so all those can be configured jira is a very powerful tool actually jira provides everything to be customizable everything can be updated so that's that's why the jira is so popular you can adapt it as per your needs you don't have to follow jira jira will follow your needs okay but though jira is totally customizable you can adapt it as per your needs but jira is developed in such a way that it will ensure you are working like if you are following agile it will make sure you will follow the agile process but as projects can be having various needs various models it will adapt to it but it will make sure that you are following agile so in this lecture as already told we will be talking about board settings so just click on board settings and so we will be talking about these in detail let's first go with general so these specifies the general settings of the board and how they will appear let's say the board name you can configure the board name from here and let us open uh, in the another tab also so we can verify the changes we are making are being reflected or not just let's say board name it should say sample board name yes it is reflected administrator it's me currently the administrator and the saved filters so the filter for ssp board that is the this filter currently this default filter so let us see what this filter is so this filter says that all the issues which 
are having project as sample board that is scrum sample project as per the filter it will show all the issues i can edit this filter also let's say one more, what let's do uh, instead of this let me show kanban I will run, run the search and let me save it. So instead of this board, it will show all the issues of the Kanban board. So currently in Kanban board, there is no issue. So it is showing me a blank. Let me switch back to Scrum project. Uh, Scrum project. Delete this. Scrum project and issue type issue type is equal to bug okay and let me search so currently eight issues are there let me save it and it will be refreshed and you can see that only three issues are showing but you can verify that all these are bugs the reason three is showing because it's a total number of bugs in the project but what we are viewing is that related to that sprint so in this sprint only three bugs are added so that's why three are being shown as so let's switch to default and see all the issues in scrum as you can see here also there are 29 issues but in scrum it's it's less the same reason because it would show only the issues which are assigned to sprint 2 let us go to go to the settings and open board here you filter the filter which is showing and the project it's showing that this project name the filtered query is this one that is filter for ssp board it's just for viewing purpose Ranking is disabled as the filter query is not ordered by rank. So what it means is that uh, as you must have seen in the search, I have not written that which issue will show first or not. Like if these two issues are there, which issue will come first or not. So I have not done any ranking. Ranking means that sorted by uh, ascending, descending or whatever the scenario it can be. So currently, so currently it is saying that it will sort it as per the filter so that was all for the general configuration now let's see the columns so what does that column says column says that this name what we are seeing here to do to do will have all the issues related with to do so you can rename it also you can say that it this to do in let's say open and if i view it from here Say that in open column I will have all the issues which are in to do so you can see that the issue status is different thing and this row is different I can add an another column let's say uh, to do now and what should I assign category to do and I move it here now you can see This to do is already mapped with this open section. So you can find these issues here. So you cannot make an, a column which is similar to issues. One issue can be present in once in these columns. This issue can be in progress or in to do, but it cannot be present in to do as well as in progress. So that's the reason it is showing empty. So currently we have three states open in progress and done. So that's the reason we can have the issues in these states suppose if I, I was having 10 states so I could have sync some another state to here so to show your purpose I can delete this in progress you see so it is showing two so it depends upon the state so maximum number can be the number of state present minimum depends upon you but this name can be anything as what you need so I can write again just showing you I can read work in 
progress and currently you see the in progress status is unmapped so I can click on add and it will show okay let me refresh it yeah so it is there so this is how you can change the columns and you can put a constraint also like issue count okay so I have added it and just refresh it so now you see all are showing in red there is a main reason the reason is that I have stated that the maximum issues in here can be of two but it is currently three so that is why it is showing red let me make it as 10 uh, let's say 5 here and if I again refresh it you won't see work in progress at red the reason is that it is within the limit so you can add a marker the manager team can add a marker suppose they uh, want to have a check that in progress issues cannot be more than 10 or something depending upon their team members let's say if there are two developers so the maximum work in progress issues let's say can be a four or five depending upon the project so they have added that maximum work in progress should be five because it can be a case developer opens a ticket in progress and then he thinks no I'm not working on it he pull out another ticket and then another ticket so it's a type of a false representation that he is working on so many tickets so to keep a check on it you can make a maximum limit as per your project needs now swim lanes as we have discussed let us put this in green again we want none of the filters now swim lanes as we have discussed these are the swim lanes so currently it is assigned with stories if let's say if I change with assignees and I refresh it there are two assignees let me collapse my swim lanes so there are three assignees one is developer one is Vaibhav Gupta and another is assigned so it has divided the swim lanes as per the assignees similarly you can divide as per the epics let me refresh it you can find the epics that all those issues which have epic one and all the issues which are not having epic so this is how you can identify the swim lanes quick filters you can see here it is the quick filters these are your quick filters so you can add as per your need like uh, you have issues my issues so you can create a filter issues unassigned and you can say assignee not equal to this admin as we have two developers or assignee is not equal to Vaibhav Gupta so if this issues is not assigned to both of them it will give the unassigned issues so I had oh I have written admin admin let me change it with developer not or I want because all those issues which are not admin and not develop yes so currently there is no issues right all the issues are assigned so this is how you can make quick filters card colors you can say assigners okay for Vaibhav Gupta you can say color can be let's say yeah now it's updated so Vaibhav Gupta would be in blue and let me refresh yeah see there's a blue tag here so by this you can easily reflect so similarly with the developer developer in an orange so you can set here card layout so cards can be configured uh, let's say okay so there can be some extra feeds like you can see the name is coming 
so you can configure more things here let's say creator of that ticket and add it and when you go here and refresh it you will find this the creator name similarly you want to add some another say let's say assignee see the developer so it is assigned by developer and created by developer also the same here so by this you can add some details which you want to quickly view it you don't want to go from the scrum and click it you just want that you just see this uh, tab see this thumbnail and you identify what issue it is so you can configure some fields as per your needs you can configure it from here estimations as we have talked ex estimations can be of two types story points and in hours so you can set it from your step, uh, story points or time estimate we have talked this also before working days you can set how many working days are there you can configure if any holidays are there so it is really important to track the effectiveness of the team and issue detail which so here you can configure all those issues you want to see here okay let's say priority uh, if i don't want to see priority you can delete it from here and just refresh it so priority won't come and similarly you can add another stuffs as well so this was a very uh, good lecture in this we talked about how these settings need to be changed uh, i don't know as in your company these settings uh, these settings privileges are given by the admin team to you or not if not you can ask your jira admin to configure some settings if you want as a project manager or if you're handling this uh, jira dashboard currently we have studied mostly all the features of the jira what are issues how issues are seen leaving the administrative part of the jira we have seen as a user what you can do with the jira this section is dedicated to real working of the jira that wall we have studied mainly the flow we will be starting creating a project and we'll be going end to end how the project goes that how the project started how the issues are created how the sprints are created how the issues are closed and sprint is closed and the reports are generated so we'll be covering this end to end scenario so that you get a real experience of a project we'll be considering that we need to develop the home page and the support page of the website let's create so we need to first create a project so i will do create project i will be doing a building a scrum project so click on next so the name would be website helping testers dot com and that's all key is fine and that's all click on submit and a project is created so if you go here and uh, you will see this project is created let's uh, go to the board because as the project is created its board is automatically created let's go to its agile board now the first thing after the project is made product owner will identify the use cases that is the stories we want to build the task which needs to be done so click the backlog mode now what we need to do we need to identify the stories task and those issues let's write a story as a user he can view courses so that he can and view them okay just click on enter so a 
story has been created next story as a user he can view the contact details so he can call customer care if required and similarly the dummy story so just give it as story number one story number two story number we are just adding because i just don't want to waste your time in just creating more and more stories and story number four also we will create some tasks so instead of story let's say create some task that integrate contact page contact page to home screen it's the jummy task okay similarly i will create more task task number one task number two task number three task number four we won't be creating bug because what is a bug when a tester will be doing testing of the development build he will find the issues and then only bugs are added into the system so for now there are no bugs okay this is our backlog now what we will do product owner will sit with the whole team and they will product owner will go through with each and every issue okay so he'll be going with each and every issue with the whole team one more thing like we have created the stories from directly uh, backlogs from here you can also use this option for creating of the story let's say story instead of story sorry instead of story number five six and you can just create it from here okay so this is how you can add backlogs to your current project so in the next section we will be studying how we can start a sprint thank you so once the backlog is created the project manager knows what the task needs to be done what he will do he will arrange a project meeting he will call all the developers testers and they will be sitting together all the team lead and they will be estimation each and every story and task that how much time it would be taking so let's say if you open any task it's a story you will find a time estimation field just a second time estimation no it's not coming okay the reason is because our project is not configured for showing the times the later we were using the sample project so it may be configured but not let's go you must be having the admin credentials for it go to configure fields and let's do where is my field so i want to have this field time tracking let the jira decide why it is not showing so it's so saying three needs to be done two are fulfilled and uh, we need to add it okay so just go to that link and uh, scroll down yes the reason is that because our screen is not configured to show this field so because no time tracking is mentioned so do time tracking here okay and let's do create now yeah i want to create a story and if i scroll down yes it's giving me time to estimate my task okay so it's done okay so yeah 
so now what i was saying is that team will sit together and they will decide that how much time it would be taking it so let's say they will sit down and will estimate okay this time so it would be taking let's say four hours okay so this would be taking uh, 12 hours agile process that any task should not be greater than two days or i would say rather each task should not be greater than one day but there are tasks which if they are greater than those days then better make it into sub task divide it but don't make it very large uh, let's say i mention it and see time is coming here so you can enter four you can give two just a second some time it would be taking it because we want to have a realistic project yeah the sample we have taken before was a realistic but when you work from end to end it will give a more detailed view how the process goes okay so we have added the number of hours for each story now uh, we have identified it now what product manager will do he will divide or into various version and epics now what are epics as we have told that epics is a main subset for example in this project what we are doing we are developing a let's say a page for home screen and a contact screen so there are two epics it is not necessary that each epic should close in one uh, sprint epics goes um, uh, in multiple sprints so you can create an epic from here let's say one epic should be home functionality pick okay and another would be contact us and summary would be uh, epic and I create now I can assign these issues to the respective stories also Okay, I say it is of epic one, epic one, epic two, epic two, epic one. So you can assign a diet here also, or you can click it and under the epic section here, you can assign it from here as well. Let's say contact us. When I click on yes, it will be shown here. So it's any way you can do we can make versions of it like when a version will be delivered to the client and those so we can create versions I can say version 1.0 and let me create a new version let's say version 1.1 or let's say 2.2.0 .2. you can assign versions also so this is version 1 version 1 version 1 version 1 okay and similarly you can add version here also let's say it's already added for it let me mention the version that when this issue will be fixed in this in which version so let's say one okay so and some task in version two okay so now we have epics we have versions and we have assigned all our issues epics and versions we have estimated that how much time will each issue will take to be completed 
we are all set with starting of a sprint hello friends so we have seen that how we have created the backlogs epics and versions also in this project we need to invite the developers and tester currently this project is only built by me so I have only the access so I need to invite developers testers and assign these issues to them just a second so here the assignee section it is all is missing that is these issues are currently unassigned right so leave that part we don't uh, going in that detail but just let you know that this is also a section in which they are invited and these tickets are assigned to the respective team members okay so let's start a sprint we will click on a create sprint and what we want this is a sprint print a sprint by dragging the issues here okay so from the backlog we have to identify the issues we'll be fixing in sprint win so you can just do drag and drop or you can just create an issue here uh, issue 10 let's say okay how you are doing drag and drop you have to estimate what I mean that we have identifies the hours here how much time it does it take so depending upon my developers or testers availability I have the move the task from backlog to sprint one for the time I think this task would be completed in this sprint time plus the severity and priority of task which would be needs to be closed first or which functionality we first need to deliver to the client so let's say this is the functionality we will be developing to the client in sprint one so we are all set and let's start the sprint it's of two week sprint which is the best time for a sprint to start we will be starting sprint from now so this sprint has 10 working days because we have set monday and sorry saturday and sunday as a holiday in our sprint details and if there are more working days you can just add it from here and you can click on start I have clicked on start and as you can see the board has changed it has gone to the active sprint before we were on backlog now as the sprint has started it has gone to the active sprint and all the issues which we have assigned in this sprint are in to do state let's change some settings you can change some board settings from here story points let's say swim lanes i want to identify epics okay and some filters and those we have already set so you can set the settings for, for now let us make them as default okay as you can see here it is it is showing us the time 10 days are remaining and once the sprint is completed you can mark it as completed and issues to me and all those stuff that's uh, how we start a sprint in the next lecture we will be taking the task that how these moves and the bugs are logged into the system so our sprint is created and our developers have started working on it so what a developer would do he will open this ticket let's say Currently all tickets are unassigned but uh, considering that a developer has opened his account and he is working on ticket. So currently is in to do state. Uh, let me assign it to me only. Web of Gupta. When I start working on it I will do in progress in real projects there can be more flows the flows can be currently we are studying with three flows to do in progress and done but in real projects there can be more flows like to do in progress and after in progress they will mark as dev complete dev complete means that developer has finished his task now QA can start now quality assurance person can change the status as testing in progress if the issue is resolved he will mark it as done that is this done 
or he she can make it reopen and it will again go into to do state so this is the real process but for the sake of teaching and to avoid unnecessary columns so that it is easily understandable we have just scheduled it to 3 so what we will saying is that in to do there is a issue in progress the developer is fixing it once the issue has been marked done tester will verify it and if the issue is not resolved he will mark as to do again okay so this is the process which we are following developer again starts working on it and it is in progress state you can just drag and drop from here also so similarly here here so this was a ticket in which a tester was working and he identified a defect so tester will do create a defect and he will say let's say bug it is bug and this all sections and you can give assign it to sprint one logically you would be filling all these when you are working in real project description what is the priority labels environment in which you found attachment linked issue so whatever is the fields the jira administrator and your manager has configured you would be filling those as we have anyhow gone through these so it's a wastage of time and i'm not telling you that uh, give assign it to me uh, what would the epic so it's uh, self explanatory and create and if you go to the da dashboard you will find a bug here so you see this is the bug so when the developer would fix and it will go here okay so this is how the process go during the sprint and if you collapse the swim lanes you can find the apics we have two that we have the swim lanes of apic that is home functionality it contact us and the third type of apic would be which are not assigned right and expand our swim lanes one more thing a very interesting thing suppose Uh, during in the course of the sprint, I want to do some more task into this sprint. So let me do. Let me create one more story here. Let do add a new story in the current sprint, which is being going on. So let me make the sprint one. as soon as i enter the sprint one you will see here a error message a warning is coming that sprint scope will be affected by the section what it means is that during the start of the sprint you have identified that this much section would be covered in this sprint but now you are adding more task into the sprint so that is the reason there can be a delay in the sprint that in this time all those tasks would not able to be completed because you are adding more task so just hit on create let's go again on manage boards go to the active sprints and let's close some sprints okay okay and okay leave this as it is so this is how the real working of uh, goes there are changes of the status testing done bugs are logged and sometimes new issues are also added into the sprint so in next section we will be seeing how to close the sprint and the reports are seen hello friends So in the previous session we have seen that how the execution goes in, during the sprint a uh, scrum sprint so let's see considering let's say our 10 days are over and we are completing the sprint it is saying it is giving a warning that five issues that total there were nine issues of those five issues you have completed but four are not completed so if you are moving if you are completing this 
sprint what it will do it will move all these four tasks back to backlog so let's say i agree to it and do it complete now it has generated me a chart what the chart says that these were the issues which were completed during the sprint these issues were not completed you can go to issue navigator it gives me an asterisk the issues which were added once the sprint was created so as you can remember we added this task when it was the sprint has already been started and this task we have added two tasks you can see the chart the chart does not looks good the reason is that um, we created the sprint and closed the same day so that's the reason the chart is not self explanatory otherwise it has been gone like this it's a sprint chart anyhow we have a section after this i will add a section in which we can check how the reports and charts are generated so you have an idea how it goes so let's see if we have an option we can delete this sprint we can reopen this sprint if if it if uh, we are extending the time of sprint or some other task needs to be done but uh, hardly these uh, options are don't to be touched they are never been touched so just forget about them so that's all how we can close this sprint we can check the reports if we go to release you can check that version 2 uh, in version 2 there were two issues in to do state and in version 1 four are done one in progress and is five and two let's say i want to release this version in that state only so i will make a release of this version and move issues the issues which are not fixed make it into release 2 version 1 is completed and it has been released to the client in the release i will see the version 1 we will be talking about the reports generated after the end of the sprints and all what type of reports you can view during the sprint the project we created we won't be using that that helping testers project the reason is that it has very dummy data so let's take the sample project or the scrum sample project and go to the report section Oh, sorry uh, yeah report section so there are a lot of type of reports chart available you can go through them so let us discuss four to five the charts which are commonly used so the first chart is the burn down chart it is the widely used chart this chart is seen during the execution of the sprint it is needed to track our activities it says that how many amount of the work we have estimated in a sprint and how the time is going and the task is decreasing so ideally this should go like this that during the when the time is increases of the sprint the duration of the sprint is increasing your task should decrease but uh, actual shows the green line how it is going and how it is increased you can see a increase here now you can see that how it can increase the reason may be that during the course of the sprint we added new task so that's the reason it is showing the upside mark another type of sprint is let's say velocity chart a chart which generally seen by the managers to identify that how much task our team can do in each sprint like it is for this one sprint so similarly if you had other sprints it's you, it uh, it would have been similar type of bars so this gray line shows that how much task amount of hours work we estimated in sprint and how much we were able to do let's say in let's say 3 4 consecutive sprints we can see that we are able to complete only 10 story, story points or hours in a sprint so um, managers came to know that there is no use for estimating this much task estimate the task which can be done or the time required is for 10 hours only so this is the how the team can be managed the sprints can be managed other chart the pie chart report we already studied that we had a filter and create the how many issues are there or not so 
version report it will give it will track it will be able to track you the versions of your project it like similarly the epic how much task of epic have been completed how much task of a version has been completed so these are similar charts that this was the total task and how you are working it so as according to your needs you can use the chart but majorly two type of charts are used burn down charts velocity charts and this pie chart diagram depending upon the filter you add it is mostly used by testers and managers to track that what are the status of bugs and how many issues are closed or not during a sprint and those type of stuff hello friends welcome to this section a new section of jira so in the previous section we have learned about what is a jira how to install a jira how the boards are handled and all those features which as a user we will be covering in your jira tool we have come up with this section that is how to administrate your jira account now you must be thinking why we need to go through this section there are many reasons first if you are in a big mnc company so it might be the case you have a separate dedicated team of jira administration and all those administrative activities need to be performed by them so this uh, course is highly recommended for them another if you are in a small based company so it might be the case the project manager and team lead these uh, concerned people are handling the jira administrative part also plus if you are a user who is using this jira tool so you must be aware of the administrative actions because you must be aware that what things are configurable in your jira tool because you will find a number of reasons that during a working of a project as each project had different features and has different needs so you must be aware that this feature is possible in jira or not if it is possible then at least you can communicate with the admin that we need this feature and it is working like this so better made like this you can communicate easily it is highly recommended to go through this feature yes jira administrative has been a quite tricky but don't worry we have break it into very simple modules and during learning of this jira administrative section i don't think you will be finding any issues uh, we will be teaching practically we like use cases during the start of a section we will take a use case that we need to perform this activity and in that section we will be following the steps we won't be teaching theoretical that this field does this this field does no we will be following as a use case so in this lecture let me just give you the overview of a jira tool so you must be first log in with your admin credentials in order to see this icon in the top right corner of your screen when you click on this you will find two sections the jira administration and site administration jira has intentionally break it into two parts because it might be the case that you want someone to get administrative rights but you don't want to show the billing information and the power to invite someone so that's the reason you can divide also them that site administration jira administration if you want so that's the reason it is break into two parts let's open applications so you can see these all tabs are present here which were shown in the drop down okay so in the application section shows the jira configuration as a whole not much of a need here we won't be covering much in detail here uh, because it does not have so much important stuff the next important section is the projects so these currently two projects are available you can go into this project and you can configure your project settings when we were teaching before yes there was an another project present as well but i have deleted it the reason is that because in the administrative section i want to teach you from the fresh and i don't want you to be confused with so number configurations already available in the administrative part so that why i have reduced the number of projects so issues this is a very important sections issues section 
by which you can create issues you can create workflows you can customize how your screens will look like if you want to add any another field in an issue or a screen you can do it so all that stuff the permission issues all that stuff is to be done from here so projects and issues are really very important sections add-on section so as we already aware that Jira has a number of add-ons so that can be configured from here not much of use and system yes you can set your project roles global settings look and feel of your Jira account dashboard through this section now once you click on user management you see the tabs have gone so these three user management billing and discoverable applications now you can click on back you see and again click on user management you again see those are gone the reason is as we have talked before that these three features have made separate from them so once I click on user administrative page it opens a new screen in user management we will be talking that how to add new users how to add new groups and to to whom we have to give the Jira access let me go to back to Jira now let's see billing as the name suggests in this we'll be having all the billing details if we have customized URL of our Jira account then we can have it and all those stuff discover new applications again not much of a use it will be coming in the add-ons and service desk actually it covers all the software which are provided by Jira account and add-ons are different things so don't be confused add-ons are the add-ons like Z Ziffer and others discover new applications these are the applications which are provided by Jira itself so that was a quick overview of the Jira administrative account so we'll be covering each and every part in detail from the next lectures thank you hello friends so in the previous lecture we have given a short introduction about the Jira account so let's start as a use case in this lecture what we'll be learning is that we need to add users to a Jira account so for this login with your administrator account and let's go to the user management under site administration you can see my name web of Gupta I have username of admin my email ID and my last login detail let you know that I will be adding some new accounts and so I will be needing some emails but I don't have those emails but Gmail gives one facility that I can use numeric that is I can use info one and at the rate helping testers.com so it would be recommended as a new email though all that emails would be routed to this email only let me give the name as developer so here the full name of the developer you should come for easy understanding I'm giving it a name as developer let me write info plus uh, let's say 20 at the rate 20 at the rate helping testers.com and let me hit create user a developer account is created let me make more accounts of let's say tester and info plus 21 at the rate helping testers.com hit on create user so I have created a developer a tester and let me create a customer as well customer info plus two two at the rate helping testers.com and hit on create user it's giving me some notifications that I have to pay for this service actually I'm using a free account for teaching purpose so here three accounts are created one is customer developer and tester so I let's go under any of the following and you can some see some details like email address username also you will see a default account that is Jira software users 
what this is that any user who wants to have access of the Jira account is automatically assigned this group by the Jira and here you can edit your details you can reset your password you can deactivate account or delete an account okay and you will find one field here login as a user it's a very interesting that as an admin I can log into any of the accounts of the users account I need to just click on it and it will be saying you are now being logged as a customer and it's a customer screen which is shown so I can log back I can switch back to my admin account by clicking here so if you see I said that just this group is a default group so let me just say remove this group you see this application access to Jira software has been disabled so when I try to log in as a customer now you can see the user is logged out I log in as a customer but it is giving me log out the reason is that I have disabled the customer access for the Jira account let me switch back and again give access to the Jira software let me refresh it okay it is refreshing itself and now clicking as a user so I'm logging as so it is giving me as login so now let's switch back to my administrative account let's go back to Jira and the user management so these are the users similarly you can add more users and uh, you can invite them to your project so when you enter create user a email notification is sent to the person's email id for the verification of his account hello friends so in the previous section we have learned that how we can add new users to the jira account in this section we will talk about groups now what are groups and why we need them now suppose i have a project and I want to add uh, some developers to the to my project or do any type of activity or I want to send email notification to my developers it is really tough to gather all the names of the developer and give them access let's say to some project by groups you can make group of those developers like there can be 10 of developers here so I will make a group of a developer and assign or integrate all those 10 developers to that group so now if I want to do any activity any permission access or any other activity instead of doing those access level permissions level to single user that is single developer I will just give access to that developer group and in return it will be given to all those developers so it is recommended to create groups so how we can go create groups so the same way you need to go to uh, user management and you will find a group field here just click on it and you will see this section so these are the default groups which is created by the Jira itself like the site admin groups this group is for all those uh, persons who have Jira uh, access we have seen in the previous lecture administrative group I am I have Abba Gupta as a part of this administration section so these are the default groups what we are interested in a customized group like for the developers testers and the customers so let's hit on create group and name it as a developer and let me hit on create group now it is showing me that it is currently empty so let me add some members to it so we have a username as developer so we will add into it so there can be another more developers also so we can make a group of them so our group has one developer only let's again to go to groups and create another group for testers and create group and let us add a tester to this group currently 
we have one tester so let's add it to the group so we have developer group we have tester group now let us make a customer group so as per your needs it totally depends upon you how how you want to use you have team leads like if it's a big project and you have four team leads you have different access path for the team leads you can make a group for team leads you want to have some let's say designers in the team you have want to have separate group you want to have consultants so whatever as per your needs so as per our needs we need three accounts developer tester and customer so that's why we are making three groups let us add customer to it okay and add user so let me go to groups and i can find all three customer developer and tester so this is how we can make the groups so in this section we will be talking about permissions if we go to administrative and system you will see under security global permissions now there are two types of permissions in jira one is the global permissions that it applies to each and every user which are handled globally irrespective of the project not each and every user but irrespective of the project suppose if there is a person uh, a developer if it he is a part of four projects then this global permissions will apply same in all those projects for him and the another type of permission is project roles these type of roles which vary from project to project you can configure them for each and every project so in this section in this lecture we will talk about global permissions let's go through this as you can see its description that these permissions apply to all projects here we have jira administrative account browse users create shared objects manage group and bulk change each and every every field their access is shown that all the site admins all the users under this group can manage groups under jira administrators under jira software users and administrators one thing you will find that every user jira software user can access this so what i mean this is that whenever we create a user he or she is by defaultly assigned to this jira software users as we have seen in our before lecture let us see again whenever we created a user so he was defaultly allocated to this group jira software users if we leave the admin part every group is assigned to this role jira software users jira software users so how we can distinguish this the global permissions if every user is having access of it is my question valid if every user who is has a jira account is a part of this group then what's the use of this global permission if i want to restrict this feature for any person as we said before this group is created by jira the basic access to provide the jira tool and some another features we want our customer our customer should not able to have access of this because what this group include the permission is that the basic jira access tool and some another access also we don't want these access okay i will remove this group we want customer to have only the access to login no other feature of the jira tool so i have removed the customer from this group and if i go to under the 
application access you can see that this Jira software access is provided to three these users not the customers so let's go under the view configuration under view configuration you can see that to to who all the Jira software access is provided that is the site admin groups and the Jira software users that all those persons who are associated with this group now defaultly all users are assigned to this group so all do have access for Jira software plus we also want our customers to have access of this so let us grant access okay so now our customers will also be login into Jira account I just repeat that Jira software is some another concept that is to login in the account and this group has privileges of Jira software plus some another privileges also so we are just assigning customers to login into Jira account if I go back to users and I go to customers you, you will see that customer is assigned to Jira software but not to that group let us come back again from here you can see that all of these now all of these accesses are provided to these group but customer is not a part of this group also so these access will not be provided to customer now let's see each of them one by one and let's compare it with the customer account so this is my admin account different browser and here I will log in as the customer so in this browser I will log in to my customer account log in as a customer and in my Chrome I am logging as a admin okay so our first permission says browse users so if let's say I go to the issues and search for the issues and if I say here assignee assignee equal to then I will get all the list of users which are available on Jira and I can assign it to it because I have access to this group the admin has the part of this group as well as this group but when I go to the customer account let us search for a issue and go to advanced let's say and I write assignee equal to you can see I can only find the current user I don't have access to the other users of the Jira account because customer is not a part of any of this group hence this access is not provided to the group customers next one create shared object so ability to share dashboard and filters with other user let's say I go to dashboard as in the previous lecture I have created a custom dashboard that is my dashboard so if I go to three dots I have the ability to share this dashboard to the another group or people now in case of customer let's make a new dashboard customized dashboard let me create a dashboard name it as demo dashboard let me open this okay and if I click to three dots I have all the other options but you won't find the option for sharing of the dashboard the reason is again customer group has not been given access to this feature similarly manage shared filter so this is my admin account and if let's say I open any filter okay so here also 
I can share this. You will find this sharing option. So I can share the customer filter while if it is a customer, let's say search for the issues and let me save this as a filter demo filter. So this is the filter and you won't find a sharing option here. Okay. And the fourth point says bulk change. You can see this user has the option of bulk change that all these 14 issues you want to let's say change the status or the assignee you can do the bulk changes to all these issues. While in case of the user he won't be having the bulk option. So this is how you can handle the access. Now suppose I for this bulk change I want the customer also to have this feature so we can provide the permission. So what permission you need to provide? I want to provide this bulk change permission to which group? Uh, I want to provide this to customers group and let me click on add. As soon as I click on add you will find this customer group is also now have access to bulk change. Let us verify it by going to customer account and let us refresh it. And if I click on three dots, yes, now the bulk change option is coming. So these are the global permissions which can be handled. You have to just provide the group to which group these permission needs to be given. So that was all. That was all in the global permission section. Hello friends. So going forward, I want to share one feature of a Jira, which is really important. Though it's a one two minute of lectures, but I want to make this as a separate lecture so that a real importance is given to it and you always keep this in mind in going forward lectures. Now how the Jira works that in case of project permissions you can assign various permissions, you can customize those settings, you can make more issues. There are many things you can go with it. Now suppose there are five testers. So don't assign all those five that this person can also close this issue and this person close also close the issue. No, make a group of those testers. Then make a permission level that in this permission level the testers are able to close the issue and assign that permission to the project. If any another project comes and you have a permission level that all those users who are assigned to this permission can perform this activity. If you were have a coding experience then these permissions are the reusable component. You make that anyone having the access of this permission can do this stuff whether it's any project. So in Jira every activity every any another customizations is done through the permission or the scheme level. We make a feature a reusable component. I repeat we make a reusable component known as a scheme. We can assign individuals or groups to that scheme and that scheme is capable of doing that activity so that this scheme can be used multiple times so that its reusability increased. Currently we have some issues. These are the issues that issues type story you can create a task bug or epic. Now the use case is as a user I want to create a new issue type and I want to see it here in the project so that for this currently we have two projects so let's create a new project so we'll work on it so let's go on a project create new project a scum project click on next let me name it as learning Jira go to its backlog and let's say story one Let's me create some story. Story 2, story 3, st 
directory four. Let me create some task one. Sorry. So yeah, tasks. Task two. Task three. Let me create some bugs. Bug. Bug one. Okay. Let me create an epic. Let's say epic one. Epic. I'll just name it as epic. And create a version as well. Version one. Assign it. Let me multiple site, assign it to the issue and let's assign it to this version. So that's good. Let me create a sprint and move some. Let me close this. Okay. So let me move some stories and task and a bug to sprint one. And let me start the sprint and of two weeks and just click on start. And let me change some. Yep. So we have a working sprint and a working project in two minutes. Now, a use case is that we want to create some issues. So for this, we need to go to issues. And you can go to issue types. Now currently we have these issue types, bug, epic, story, task and subtask. Forget this, we will be covering this later on. So we want to create one issue. So let me click add on an issue. And I want to name this, let's say if any user want to uh, create an issue of an improvement. Okay. A tester is testing and he thinks that some improvement can be done. It is not a bug or not a feature needs to be developed. It's just an improvement that might in case we have time so we can take this up. We don't want this as a subtask and click on add. So you have this improvement issue type here. Now let me go to issue type schemes. As you can see that for every project there is a scheme. You can see uh, we have a sample scrum project and it, it can have these type of issues. Kanban project it can have these type of issues. And this is a project we created a scrum project that is learning Jira. It has these type of issues. So our main objective is that we created a project, we created a new issue improvement and it is not a part of this. So we need to assign it here. So either I can do edit and I can move this improvement here or I can just delete this issue and I can create a add issue type and I can name it or can do that stuff. Okay. So let's create a new one. Let me name it as what the short form of this project we are following. That is layer. Okay. So let me delete or let me give a custom name so I can, it can be identified. So I will name it LR learning Jira. Lear correspond to a default one and I will name it as LR. So let me delete this. I don't want the default one. So let me add a new issue type. And let's say name learning Jira. Okay. And I can name it issue scheme. What type of issue types I want? Okay, I want bug. I want story. I don't want subtask. Okay, I want task, improvement and epic. And I click on save. So you can see 
I have this new issue type, but it is not associated to any project. So this is a issue scheme. As we have talked on a previous lecture, we have created this issue. It's not project specific. We can name it as a generic one or a default one and we can assign projects to it. So all those projects which will be having this type of scheme would be having these type of issue types. For example, let me say associate. Currently we have three types of project. Let me say this project should be associate with this type of scheme. So now you see this project would be having these all issues. Let me again click on associate and let me say Kanban also. You see, sorry. Kanban is not here. Now Kanban will be following this type of issue. So let me switch back. Let me switch back to learning Jira. And now Kanban will be following this type default one because no issue is associated with it. Now let us check. Let me go to the customer account. Refresh it. Let's go one by one. Now Kanban. Kanban project is not assigned to any issue type. So it will follow the default issue type. So that is it will have epic story and improvement. So Kanban, so it has three issue types, epic story and improvement. Now let's see the learning Jira project. I have selected this and it would be having story, it would be having task. So in all it will be having five types. One, two, three, four, five. In this learning Jira account, in this project, we have successfully added a new issue type improvement. This is how you can add. You can also associate it from the project settings. So if you go to the projects and if you go to learning Jira project of ours and if you go to issue types. So you can see this is the issue which we have created. So you can add it from here or you can add it from here also. Which issue type you want to use. Okay. Or you want to add subtask or not. So by any you can work with it. Either from the you can associate either from the issue types schemes by going with the associate or you can go from the project. So this is how you can create an issue. Just to reiterate myself, you have to go to administrative settings and go to the issue type and you have to create a new issue. Then you have to create a scheme. Scheme corresponds to set of all the issue types you want to have in your project. And then you can associate it with your project in which you want to the issue type you want to have. That's all. That's all for this lecture. Our use case is completed that as a user you want to add a new issue type so that it can be viewed under the project create issue. Let's say you go to the task and you see these fields and now you go to the improvement the issue type we created. You will also see this screen because the issue type which we have created, we have not assigned any specific screen or any fields to it. So it is opening the default screen of the all the other issue types. In this lecture, our objective is as a user, I want to have a screen for the new issue type which we have created. We have to go to issues. So by going to issue and issue types, we have created an issue and associated with a project. Now we want to change this screen. That is we want to change the values. When we select this improvement, we, we don't want those few many fields. As it's an improvement, we don't want the epic link in which sprint we needs to fix this. So all those don't want to be shown on that screen. 
so we will be seeing that in our current lecture how you can do you can go through the screen sections just click on screens and what you can say you want to add a screen and you can name for let's say for a learning Jira project just name it learning Jira improvement screen and I click on add it shows more that on that screen what all fields you want to see so let's see I want to see the assignee I want to see the description I want to resolution and let's say I want to go for say reporter for the improvement we want who has reported this improvement to whom what's the description and what's the resolution and we can also add the summary section okay so these all the fields we want to see when we go to issue type we select improvement so only these fields would be shown I go to back to project learning Jira sorry not I need to go to issues right so I have developed a screen here that is improvement screen let me edit it and correct the name we have to create it new issue screen this was our first task second as we have studied that all the activities handled through a scheme so we have to create this new issue screen create scheme for this new issue screen currently we can see that for a bug we have a screen that is a default one for all other we have this so we have to create a one scheme for LR improvement scheme okay and the default screen is improvement screen now we what we have done we have create a scheme for this new issue now we have to make a set like when we created a issue what we did we created a issue and then we make a scheme having all the issues similarly here we created a screen plus we also created a scheme of issue types now we will be making a set of all the scheme we need to have in our project so create scheme for our scheme reusable that is new scheme for improvement plus other scheme for other issues so it would be a set having all the schemes for all the issue types you can add a issue type you can name it at learning Jira issue scheme default scheme and you can just use that for improvement you can use a scheme which we have created and for bug you can use the bug screen let's say scrum bug screen okay and that's all so this is the scheme we have created it and this was the default one so what we need to do we need to integrate 
new generated scheme to our project so how we can do we can just go to projects we can go to learning jira we can go to screens so currently it is using the rear scrum issue type as we have seen but we want to change it we would be using a different scheme that is the customize which we have created it lg issue type scheme and we can associate it it is done and if i go to here to my customer account and let me refresh my page and let me hit on create if i click on create if i go to project learning jira so i have all these issue types available let's say if i go to story i have these all sections but if i select the improvement i have only these fields assignee description resolution reporter and summary because this is the new screen which we have developed for the improvement this is how you can create a screen for your issue type so the previous section how we can create an issue type in this section how we can create screens for that issue type just a repetition so through screens we can decide how that screen will look like what fields it will have through screen schemes that is this we created a scheme that is reusable for the new issue type through issue type scheme screens we created a scheme having this new issue scheme and the other schemes so that it can be integrated or associated with a project and then we integrate it to our project that's how you can create a screen for an issue type i hope this two lectures are real informative first we created an issue then linked that issue to a project then we created a screen and linked it to a project so we tried it to explain as easy as can nothing can be easy more than this so just practice this if it still feels confusing just go to these lectures one or two times more also plus try to do it on your own if you are you're using company account and you don't have administrator access create an account a dummy account at of your personal email id and try these features hello friends i am considering that you have understand in the previous lectures in which we studied how we can create users groups how we can assign roles in a project what are issues and how we can develop the screens now in this lecture let's consider two use cases first use case let's say there can be two users so you can see that this user has been assigned to all the projects which are available on jira and similarly the all others so how we can restrict them so that a particular user is only assigned to the projects he is being allocated to second use case there can be scenario like in a project we have developers we have testers we have customers so how we can let the permissions that only a tester a qa person can close an issue cus does not have authority to create a issue close a issue or some another features like moving changing the state of the issues customer can just view the issues so both the use cases first handling the permission of a user with respect to the project roles handling the permission with respect to the project uh, features so these are more or less the same thing so in this lecture we will be checking how to manage the permissions of the users in a project first of all to do this we need to go to the system and we need to define some project roles 
let's say uh, we have considered three type of users so just follow them we have developers okay we have testers and we have customers So it is asking that you can manage the default members. It is not recommended to add the members here. Just create the roles that like these type of roles, different type of roles available in a project. Let's go to issues. And under the issues, you will find permission schemes. So through this permission schemes, you can define the permissions of the different users. Let's say this is the default permission scheme and if you check the permissions it gives the various activities permission that let's say to browse project who can browse project any logged in user who can manage sprint any logged in user so similarly you can assign roles to the project roles or the groups here so let's go back currently all three projects are having a default software scheme so let us copy let's change the name let's say customized default scheme as we know the scheme is a reusable one so let's make a customized software scheme which will be assigning to the projects let's check the permissions so administrator okay administrator have access browse projects okay everyone can browse project manage sprints not everyone let's say manage sprint project role is granted to okay we need to create one more role i just forgot of the project manager so system under the system it's a project roles okay yeah so we have to say project project manager at project role so let me again go to issues I can go from here and let me go to the permissions customized permission which we are making okay so manage sprint I want only the project role that is project manager can manage the sprints okay view read only permission assignable close issue I want only the tester can close the issues create issues so I want developers to close create the issues I want project managers I want to add the testers I don't want the customers can create the issue one more thing uh, we add that manage sprints can only be created by manager but we need to remove this any logged in user so just remove this application access any logged in user similarly close issue we can remove for any logged in user similarly the create issue So as per your project needs, you can change this all this stuff. So currently how we are distinguishing manage sprint handled by project manager, tester can close any issue and customer cannot create any issue. Okay. That is a project permission scheme. Let me go back to it. Now we want to associate this scheme to our project so how you can do it 
you can go to your projects from here you can go to the project let's say learning jira and here you will go under permissions so currently it is using a default software scheme we want to change it so you can go and use a different scheme and let's say you can go for the customized software scheme okay and you can verify it that management role is taken by project manager and yes it is the same one close issue is done by testers so we added a scheme that these developers would be having this type of access testers would be having this type of permission but in a project who are the developers and who are the testers we forgot to mention so let's go to users and roles you can add a here add role to a user so search group we have a group of customers and assign to customers so this person is added under the customers let us go to developers developer we i have added developer given the role of developer so added customer developer project manager so currently myself that is webhav gupta i am the administrator as well as the project manager and the tester so we have a tester also and assign to the role of tester so let's go to the all and see yes we have administrator customers developers project manager testers okay so we have all the roles associated it test it and go to each role and see if this permissions have been applied or not so let's go to the permission and see okay so who can manage as sprints the project manager so that is myself web of gupta okay so let me log in as currently i am in login so that's why it's not showing me it's disabled so let me go to the board let me go to the board of this project and yes i can complete the sprint okay now let me log in with another user and let me see i have the access of managing the sprint let me log in as a developer okay and let me view our boards close print yes it is disabled because i am not the manager so that's why it is showing me disabled so that's that's correct only manager can manage the sprints now okay let's see ab ability to create issues and we can see develop tester all can create an issue yes let's see a customer can do or not because we have not given access to the customer okay and let me go to the customer account let me go to the customer login as a customer and if you check he does not have access of the project 
right in the create he is not having the access to create in a project that is learning jira so it is totally correct yes the customer is not able to create issue and project manager can handle the sprint so similarly you can grant access to all the issues so you need to create project roles and then you under the issues you have to create permission and associate with your project so this is was your second use case that how we can handle the permissions within our project so uh, in a last lecture we have seen that how a div different tester developer and project manager can have special permissions or different permissions within a project so that was our second use case so the first use case was that how we can restrict the access of a project let's say developer for project 1 can access only the project 1 and developer of project 2 can access only the project 2 so for this let's create go to user management and create two developers so we have one developer and so this developer is for let's say a learning jira project and we will have a new developer for sample scrum so ideally the name should come but for easy understanding for teaching purposes we are using the name like this and give the name as helping testers.com create a user okay so let's go so to our projects now back to jira and let's go to projects and we have seen that this learning jira has been assigned to permission customized software so let's open this permission which we have studied in previous lecture let's go to this permission and this was a customized software scheme which we developed so we have seen that browse project who can browse project we have given any logged in user so let's edit it and let's say who can have access customers of that project who can have access developers of that project who can have access uh project manager of that project and also the testers of that project and let's remove anyone who is logged in can access the project okay so for this project so this this is the scheme updated currently let me go to again uh to the permission schemes so currently it is this scheme is used by only one project let's say this scrum project also use this this scheme so let me see if i can edit from here no i cannot i have to go the respective project sample project i have to go to settings i have to go to the permissions and i have to update it to use the customized software scheme so also it has been updated and in this project let me assign one developer the new developer which we have created that is developed for sample project and assign it to it if i go to issues and in permissions 
I can see this scheme is associated to these two projects now. Now, this learning Jira project has one developer that is dev1 developer and this project has a different project developer. So, both developers are different and assigned to respective projects. So, they should have access to that project only. Let's verify it. Let's switch back to the main account and he is the developer that is to the learning Jira project. So log in as a developer and under the project section, let's see to what projects he is associated with. Okay, so he is associated with learning Jira. So that is pretty self explanatory and clear. He is not assigned to Scrum project. Now let us log in with a different developer. That is the developer for Simple Scrum. Now log in at a user. And let's see to which project he is assigned. Okay, it's not showing. Let's see view. Okay, so it is assigned to Scrum sample project, but not learning Jira. Kanban is, we are not considering it because for Kanban, it has default permission. We are only considering that the user, the second developer should not have access to learning Jira. And that is perfectly correct. So, our first use case is complete. The two developers should have access to their projects only. A user should not have access of all the projects in the Jira. So this, so we studied in these two lectures how we can handle the permissions of users for different projects and also the permissions for different users within the project. In this lecture, the use case we'll be covering is that how we can make the custom fields. Let's say we created this issue. That is the improvement, right? So suppose it was having these fields that assignee, description, resolution, report and summary. So suppose I want this screen should have one more field that is idea field just just for explanatory purpose we will be having one more field that is idea so how we can add it will be covering in this lecture first you need to go under the issues and you can go under custom fields so these are the fees which are available under various issues okay like parent link location epic status epic name approvals assignee all those fields which are covered here now i need to add one custom field so it will ask what type of field i want to add i want to add a checkbox date picker so let assume I just want to enter a text field that is a single text field okay and let me click on next and it is asking me the name and let me give it a reference the my field name is reference okay and let me click on create It is asking me for re-indexing. Let's perform the re-indexing. That is it refreshing the Jira database and its background. So let's acknowledge it. So re-indexing is done successfully. If I go under the issues, 
if I check on the custom fields if I search for reference yes this field is created so now let's make a field configuration so this is the default configuration and if we configure it you will see that it will show that how it is assigned how this configuration is assigned to various schemes so for our case let's create a new field configuration for this custom field so let us say reference config reference configuration click on add again go to issues and if i go to field configurations okay so it has added a reference configuration now if i go to configure and i search for reference a search for reference and yes i have marked is add required that is let's make this optional so when creating an issue we don't want that this reference is a mandatory field plus we need to set on which screens we want this custom field let's click on screens so here we will find all the screens as this custom field we want only to be present on improvement issue so we have created this improvement screen in our before lecture so we will check it that this custom field would be added on the improvement screen and you can click on update so we have made a field configuration now let's make a scheme for it so go to add field configuration give it it a name custom field scheme so defaultly all the screens are mapped with default i need to what i need to do i want to say for the improvement i want to use the reference configuration okay or we can do one thing we can edit this because in a reference configuration we have all the configurations for all the fields so let's use this reference configuration now we need to associate with a project so let's go to a project learning jira and if i go under the field section those permission yes this is the field section so you can see currently it is using a default one so let us use a different scheme that is in which we have our custom field and associate it so it is done so let's check this let me click on the create and first let me use a story so you see that there is not any custom field reference zero result found on the another hand if i try to create an improvement you will find this reference field and you can also see that we have not marked it as a mandatory field as asterisk is not available on this field just a glimpse again what we have done in this lecture we have built a new field that is the reference field we have created a configuration and then we have assigned a scheme for it and we then we go to the project and said that for this project we will be using this field configuration so it was pretty simple uh, so this is how you can make your custom fields in different issue types thank you in this lecture we will be talking about workflows we already have studied that what are workflows and in this lecture we will be talking about how we can customize it 
let's look at this bug and if we go into the workflows you can see the workflow the current workflow is three states to do in progress done and from any state we can go to any state so this was the default workflow so suppose we have this new improvement right just a sec sorry so this must this was an improvement okay if we check its workflow it is also the same so for this improvement field i don't want this type of workflow to exist so i will be making a customized workflow so how i can do that so let's go to the administrator account and go to issues and go to workflows and let's create a new workflow name it as an improvement workflow and let's make a work workflow so this is the open state from the open state let me add a new state that is working okay off uh, this create should goes to open and this working should come here then let me add a new state let's say dev complete that is the development has been completed it will come after the development has was working and has been completed so after this let's say in QA that is it is under testing okay. and then let's say add a new state that closed so that the ticket is closed and I will put it here also from a working state it can uh, I can see that it is invalid so it can be closed so let me add uh, invalid or let's say on hold so currently these starts are available if they are not available you can create your own like say I said hold I just had I can ha add a new status on hold so it is in hold means it is in progress or let's say on hold is to do that we need to do it so create so this means that ticket is on hold from QA a ticket can be reopened so let me add a new state that is reopened okay so now let's take a transition so from open a developer team can start working on it so we can create a line from here to here and name can be dev working okay from working it has completed so it has read development completed okay so when the development is completed it is moved to in QA that is for testing when it has been tested and the issue is closed so it we can add it as fixed or let's say implemented so when the developer was working on an issue so he may think that he is not able to do it or that feature is not possible so that ticket can be marked as hold so that is we can say on hold so from hold uh, he can talk with his team leads so there can be two possibilities either that ticket would be closed either it can be closed or it can be again start working okay similarly a ticket which is reopened from QA state a ticket can be reopened 
maybe an issue was found or there is a defect so it can be reopened and it can again go to open state again reopen so this is the workflow that is firstly an issue is created the dev team starts working on it so are there are two possibilities either he can complete that development task so it moves to dev complete or he thinks that this issue cannot be fixed or some things are there so he can move it to on hold position okay so from on hold there are two scenarios that either he will start working again or he can say that this issue cannot be fixed or cannot be implemented and that issue can be marked as closed from the dev when the development has been complete it is go to testing state and that is an in queue state and where the test is testable if it is successfully tested it goes to a closed state else it is reopened and it is again open so this is the workflow we want to implement for a new issue type that is improvement so it is automatically saved if i go to workflows so under the inactive section i will find this because it is not currently implemented with anything so that is implement workflow now we want to assign it to the scheme so let's go to the workflow scheme and currently in a project this scheme is going on so for all the issues it is using an an assign type so let us edit this or we can create a new let's say uh, we added into this so we need to go to the edit option you can see for all the issues is is using the unassigned issue types this this it is using this type of workflow for all the issue types suppose i want to add a new workflow that is my existing workflow which i just created improvement workflow this workflow and i want to add it for the improvement task and just i click on finish so for all the types it is using the default workflow and for my improvement it would be using this type of workflow and i need to publish it so what it is saying it is saying that uh, there were before improvement task right so it is saying if they were in this status what your what new status you want to in be so before any uh, improvement which was in, in progress state i want to be in working state to do state open and done i want to be in closed state so it is mapping because improvement issue was currently used in a project now since we are changing its uh, state so it is asking that before these states what all these states you want to map to the new states and let me click on associate so there will be background job would be doing and you can acknowledge it okay so this is how you can edit this one or let's we can instead of editing we can make a new one also so let it name it as customized workflow let me name us let's name this customize workflow and for default it has given this let's see the diagram what it is so it has given the default this one so we can assign it or we don't want this okay so add existing so for let's say copy of so we want for all the issues to have this workflow so all assigned issue these workflow okay and for the improvement we have improvement workflow and for the improvement we will use this okay so before what we have done just let's let's go to the issues only issues workflow screens so in the previous case we edited the old one now we have just created a new one okay so we can go by the either way so this is the customized workflow which we created
now so we have created a new workflow for improvement we have also created a scheme now we want to attach with our project the scheme let's go to the project and let's go to the workflows so here you can say the default workflow is using this so let me switch scheme and I want the customized workflow which I created just now and if I will associate it it's asking for acknowledgement okay so it has been integrated so now let's test it so let me go to the issues search for issues so it improvement workflow you can see that it is following this type workflow from open I can only go to working state that is it is currently an open so I can go to dev working state only from dev complete I can either mark it as on hold or I can go to in QA similarly let's make me as development complete and it will go to dev complete after that I can go to testing so that in QA process is done either it can be reopened by the tester or it can be implemented so if I click on implemented this ticket would be closed that is this improvement would be closed so this is how you can add your custom workflows for specific issues so maybe for the bug you want to have a different workflow so you can manage by this so in the previous uh, lecture we have studied that uh, how we can act or made a new customized workflows right but there can be a situations when you want to edit the current workflows so how you can do that so let's go to the workflows and you can see that this is let's say this was the uh, the default workflow which is being used by all the issues which are unassigned okay so I want to edit it but if I edit it there can be issues issues can be like this workflow has been used by the another items as well the current the current project these workflow is being used so what the Jira says or the best practice is make a copy of this workflow and then use it okay and then assign it to it so that the current process of the project is not hampered so let's make copy of it it's I already made copy for testing of myself so that's so let us name it as my customized customized workflow and let me go to the end and delete it okay and this is it let me update this one I want to delete this delete transitions okay I want this to be a very simple transition that is from a to do it can go to only in progress working that is from in progress I, it, a ticket can be closed let me add it and it is automatically saved so let me go to my workflow schemes and currently this is my customers flow which is being used so let me edit this and instead of this one let me use a different workflow let me remove this workflow and I will add a workflow which I recently created my customized workflow that is this workflow for all the unassigned issues right and for the improvement I am using the default one and let me click on publish so this is how you can edit the current workflow if you try to modify the existing workflow it might be the case that Jira would have sometimes given you an error so make a copy of it and then assign to it now if I go to an issue search issues you can see here that if I click on a workflow 
you can see now it is using the new one while improvement it is using the old one itself so let us go to the board also uh, if I go to the layer board this project board so in a default board there were currently only the three sections to do in progress and the done so it was okay for all the issues right but for the issues like for the improvement we have more tasks so we can add more here so I can go to board settings so I can go to the columns so if you see it is saying that for the state it is not containing issues I have these issues for the complete also so I can just map it here I, I sorry I can create new columns like I want to have on hold on hold column I will move all the issues here I can have def complete when it uh, when the development has been completed so it moves to def complete so def complete means that I it is not sent to in QA but the issue has been completed so similarly I can map these issues as well so if I go to my active sprint so you can find that more columns are added here but as you know let's say this is a sprint one let me create one the to do issue improvement or uh, let's me add a story any text and let me create so as you know oh actually this is not in sprint one so that's the reason it is not showing sprint one sprint one sprint one okay now if I go to my active sprint you can see that this is a task this task can go to in progress only state because we have checked its workflow its workflow is that from to do it can go to in progress only so that's the reason it will highlight only the column each which you can change similarly if it is in uh, in progress state it can only go to the done state so if you try to switch it you cannot go to these columns so this is how you can manage your boards as well and uh, you you can also customize it as we have studied like if I go to board settings so similarly you want to have two type of issues available in progress or let's you want the working issues also in progress you can map it here so both type of issues will be shown under the in progress so you can edit this thing so as we have studied in workflows that these name does not corresponding to the states it is for only for your reference so it can have multiple types of states so this is how you can manage your dashboards when you change your workflows thank you hello friends so in this lecture we will be talking about how we can assign the issues the default assignees for example let me go to the search for issues let's say and let me create a new issue name it as new issue and you can see the assignee is automatic so when I do a create here and I go to this issue you can see the assignee is an assigned I want to make sure that whenever any issue is created and if it is not assigned then it should be assigned to a particular person so hi I can do this so let me go to the projects I'll go to my current project and you will find here the user and roles and here you will find a default assignee that any issue which is created should have a default assignee 
so you can add a default so you can say your project lead that for unassigned one you will be having the webhub gupta would be the default assignee okay so and his name is pro and he is project lead that is the default assignee so let me create an update and now let's create one more new story let's say name it as new story and let me click on create yes so you will find this issue is created to web of gupta while in the previous case we have seen it was assigned it was unassigned so this is how you can manage that all the issues which are created does not have a signee a default sign to a person mostly through the project manager so in the previous lecture we have seen that how you can assign all the issues to a particular person if they are left unassigned in this lecture we will be talking that how you can make groups or components in your project so that you can individually assign an issue so let me like let's say create this story so you will find this a component which is null because we have not assigned or made any components so if we make any components we can handle which would be the assignee for example let's see let's go to the project and let me go to my current project and here you will find components so let me say my first component name is home screen and all the issues related to home screen will be checked by developer okay because he is the component lead of same and add it another let's say all the payment issues would be taken care by webhub because he is the project lead right so let's see let us create an issue now let's make a story here and you will see now a component section have a drop down at what type of issue it is it is of home screen okay home screen issue left this field as automatic don't assign it and just create it so you will see that it is assigned to developer because it was in home issue if i now create an another story and i mark is as payment issue and let's see to and leave the signee as default one and now create it so you can see that this issue would be created to web of gupta because its component is payments and similarly the reason is because we have defined here if we go under the components you can see here that all the issues which have components as home screen will be defaultly assigned to developer while on the another hand all the issues have component payment screens will be assigned to webhub gupta so this is how you can make various components and you can assign the issues